This podcast was brought to you by our patrons at patreon.com forward slash APWSTR. Become a patron for only a dollar or more and get access to episodes early and ad free, plus get exclusive content throughout the month. I'm just going to make a sound. <laughs> <laughs> that's, your, that's, that's your idea for the intro. <laughs> Jesus Christ. You're. you're, you're, you're <laughs> Bro, I'm sweating up here. Jesus. All right, that's a, the intro. There that's the intro. That's the intro. Put an effect on it. I don't know. Put a flange Slap effect. A fucking, yeah, let's put, put a, like put a, a <laughs> put a flange put a, effect. Put a drum and bass on it. Turn fucking. the gain all the way down. Put a flange effect on it and make it sound like it's um underwater. Why are you making me do extra work? I only have twelve. It's for I have two twelve seconds. hours. I got twelve hours. It's for two seconds. It's gonna take me three hours do to do that one. You effect. could cut the audio. No, that's not gonna happen. It's it not and then happening. I will edit no, that's gonna take four hours to you. because I'm gonna need two hours to upload it. What the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> it's a fucking ten second intro. I'm need, no, no, no. Whoa. What the fuck is this? <laughs> I don't know. Is that the <laughs> that, that's the that's fucking the intro? We, we did it. We fought. We, we fought. Had, we, we had. <laughs> Uh, let's Wait, open it up oh. by saying we're broken up now. Yeah, comments are like, <laughs> I don't think the relationship is actually as stable as they perceive it to be. Um, actually, I think I think the reason why they took a week off uh, is because it's because they, they keep they fighting hate each every other. other day. They hate each other so much. They have a swig of water, a swiggity swooty of water. Hi, everyone. Hi, guys. <laughs> Welcome to. <laughs> okay, all right, okay, that can't, can't be. Can't look at me like that and say I'm gonna take a swiggity swooty of water and move like. <laughs> that's the yeah, that's... <laughs> All right, let's Hi, go. Everyone. Hello. Hi. Welcome to a podcast. podcast will save, save this relationship. relationship. I'm, I'm Sarah. She her. All right, we gotta do it again because we overlap each other, <laughs> and now no one's gonna know what our pronouns are. Exactly. I'm Josh. He him. Fuck you. Uh, <laughs> how dare you? For those of you keeping score at home, that's I think Josh two Sarah ten. <laughs> no, it's fucking not. It's more like Josh seventy five and Sarah two. <laughs> I'm Sarah. She her. Yeah. Is is pronouns really a competition? I swear to God, and you do this every time. God damn, it sounds like someone doesn't really care about the cause. No one should force you <laughs> to say your pronouns uh, on their terms. How you doing, Sarah? I'm doing good, you fucking... <laughs> you fucking snake. You sneaky little, little, little slimy snake. snake. A little sneaky snake. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, yeah. Little sneaky snake today. How, how are you doing, though? Like, I'm doing January. pretty good, yeah. That's good. That's yeah, good. That's I, like good the, I like the beanie. I, 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 I never I wear I never all comment. the time now. I yeah. don't know why. I, don't know, I, I, I never comment on it, but I want to say I like the beanie. I like the duck beanie. Thank you. I you like know? them, too. This is the one that I just keep wearing, I guess. Because it's the one that's, like, the most around because I like it the most. I get it. But I know I have six other ones. But I don't know where they are. And they're just spread around they're in the definitely office. They're on the floor somewhere. They're on the floor. There's a Santa hat over there. I don't know why. Yeah, I don't know. But uh, yeah, I'm glad you're doing good. I'm doing good too. It's been That's a good. nice. It's been a nice week off. Yeah, it's after, nice. <laughs> after a, I'm just jumping into it. Fucking after a, a a nice a nice weekend getaway. Yeah, shit, man. Um, where do you want to start? Where do you want to? <laughs> Did we even talk about the thing with your uncle? Yeah, that was before we left for Atlanta. Yeah. So, okay, so here's here's where uh, we've been for the past three weeks, four we weeks. basically had like a week and a half just filled with anxiety. Well, filled with anxiety, and then the my thing with the uncle happened, and then we recorded the week after, and then that week, we after that week, we went to uh, Atlanta yeah. for a vacation. Yep. Uh, Sarah, what would you rate this vacation out of 10? I don't know, man. It was really weird. It was, I, I, I will say it wasn't all bad. There was one thing we were there for, which was the, the Jack White concert. And which was like, really good. It was like amazing. Yeah. Like, I, I, um. Josh isn't even a Jack White fan. And, and then, I am now. I, yeah, like, he is now I've a been, fan. Um, unironically, every, every time I've been playing Apex with the guys, <laughs> I've put on, uh, Elephant, the, that album in the yeah. background. And I think I've gotten more kills in Apex Legends because of it. <laughs> Unironically, I don't know why, but like this is so funny because I've been a fan of Jack White, right? 
and everybody is a fan of Jack White a they little bit. They don't know bit. it, yeah. And I they think... don't really know it yet, and they like certain songs by the White Stripes or the Raconteurs, and they'll have it in their playlist, but they don't know the cheat code to music, which is just to listen to everything Jack White touches. And that's it, and it's all good music. Yeah. Um, They don't know that yet, and then once you do, uh, fucking, I've been the one that's like, Jack White's really good. Everybody should go listen to Jack White. Let me play this Jack White song, blah, 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 for like all my friends. And they've all been like, yeah, yeah, yeah. What the <laughs> fuck ever? I don't care. It's uh, Sarah's here. She's going to play the Jack White song. <laughs> and like it happens every day. And then fucking, uh, it's just funny because I know how awesome he is. Yeah. Because I just know. But it's funny to bring somebody and then to, f- to leave and be like that was really awesome <laughs> it's it's nice it's I good i like yeah. being able to like share good things with you you know hmm. what i mean oh yeah i like that you share them too yeah and yeah the concert was like awesome like i i, I um i highly recommend it if jack white ever comes back to like a city <laughs> he's a fucking crazy person he's a crazy person and you should look at him yes <laughs> yeah and with his weird blue dyed hair which i love <laughs> I love it. <laughs> it's fucking great, it's man. It's wild. Yeah, fucking and like the fact that like he um I, I like the uh, the backing members. They seem like a bunch of random guys just like chilling yeah. and playing music. Yeah, he does like different ones each time. Like I I do miss uh I do hate that I missed the tour with um for Boarding House Reach because they he actually had a lady drummer on. Oh shit. And she was really fucking cool. Her name was like Camilla or something. <sighs> But it's it's nice because it actually does feel like the Jack White fans that are really interested in the tour and like, you know, the shit, the behind the scenes stuff. Uh, everybody really likes the other people also, like the musicians yeah, I think, as well. Uh, there was a guy there that was actually from Atlanta. And I think they got a more of an uh, applause. Oh, yeah, than, he was uh, cool as fuck yeah. than Jack. Yeah. Yeah. So that was pretty, <laughs> that was fun for me. <laughs> that was cool. Yeah. But, um. And like Daru was there and he threw his sticks, which is like a thing he's been doing on every Yeah, and I was show. like, damn it, we should have gotten here two minutes earlier. If I could have gotten a better into the mosh pit and I forgot the... that he did that, yeah. Yeah. But like it was it was just a good time. Mm-hmm. I will say the the thing that sucked for me was um well the there fucking were, people. The people. <laughs> oh my god. I don't I, think I don't I've wanna, ever been to a wanna, show where wanna, people are that rude. Yeah, I wanted to start off with the positive, like the concert was good, because I have a lot of things that are <laughs> negative about the trip. I think like, I think that was Atlanta. Yeah. I think the thing that did it was that was Atlanta Jack White people. But it's, yeah, it's kind of weird though, because um, we, we went to a concert uh, like back in 2019 in Atlanta for Third Eye Blind. And they were nicer, but, like, they also didn't really talk to us. Yeah, I guess, yeah, the Third Eye Blind people that were down here in Orlando that year, they, they talked were to ni- us, yeah, and they, they were, were nice. fucking crying. And they were those, crying and, like, hugging the music, each other. And, and I was like, fuck yeah, me too, man. That was, I think, one of the best, I think, in terms of, like, the people around us experiences oh, yeah, I've was, ever yeah. had. Even though the music was, it was Third Eye Blind, it was just good. I yeah, think, it was yeah, good. Jack White was better musically, but um, to get, from my perspective mm-hmm. during the concert... Um, there were a bit, you had more experience with these guys. There was these two dude bros in front of us oh and one God. of them was like just tall enough, tall enough to be in front of me and like, be like, I can't see Jack White. And then there was yeah. this guy with his, um, girlfriend and the guy was like drunk and like Absolutely. vibing a little too hard. Sloshed. Sloshed fucking drunk. And I'm holding this can of like $5 water. <laughs> yeah. Cause they only had cans. <laughs> can they had water. the liquid death cans yeah whatever the fuck it is that was their only water when you went up and were like hey can i have a water they were like yeah one can one whole can that'll be 450 (laughs) you're like fucking scam but also like i totally get it because that's what the price of water was when i was at universal so like whatever i mean yeah but um fucking what was it this guy was like bumping into me to the point where I, I eventually got backed into the pole that was hit there. So like the, the place we were at apparently was like a renovated church. Yeah. And like they had the risers, like a, like a whole, like the nosebleeds, whatever they're called balcony. That's what it's called. Yeah. And they had, they, they had poles supporting it. And I was eventually pushed into it because I didn't have enough room. To yeah. Fucking, yeah. And then the, the guys in front of me, I think were doing part of that too, but they um, were, yeah. Yeah. But I, it was also the guys to the left of us. I remember because they kept, people kept showing up. And yeah. the guys in front of us were actually such a, to the front left, were such pieces of shit that there was an entire, like, person's space of room, and they would not move up. 
And so I'm just sitting there like looking at them like, what the fuck? Are they going to move up? What the fuck are you doing? And I think part of that too, it was kind of interesting seeing how many people were just moving out of the concert area back into the concert area. Like I think that was- Yeah, they were going to go get drinks probably. Yeah. So I mean, I feel like it's probably normal. It's been so long since I've been to a concert. I feel like it's, I'm an alien. (laughs) I mean, yeah, if you want like drinks during a show, but I'm like, I don't know why anyone would leave at this point. Yeah. Like like, Jack's on stage. Why would you be like, all right, you know what? I'm going to get out of here so I can get a- (laughs) A margarita. I'm going to get out during <laughs> Lazaretto. Yeah, like, what the fuck are <laughs> what you, are you doing? doing? Yeah. Sit there and watch the guy. Watch I think the it's, guy. I think it's also people are irritated because they don't have their phones on them. Because of every, oh, all yeah. of our phones are in a bag. Which, honestly, I liked a lot. I, I, it was I was, fucking I dope. was like, holy shit, that's pretty cool. Yeah. And, like, the fact that, like, I mean, the, the thing that sucked is I was a bit bulky, but, like, other than that, like... Yeah, I thought I, it was, still like, like, a that fanny that I didn't pack or have something. any, like... It was kind nice. of cool not having my phone, phone on. Yeah. For even a little bit, um, but yeah, no, I think uh, it was it was um, uh, yeah, ah uh, man, I <laughs> oh and so yeah, so they wouldn't move, and yeah. then people started filling in the gaps around me, which meant somebody would be like, oh hey yeah, can I move? Uh, can I uh, cut in front of you? And yeah. I would be like, yeah sure, and then they would stand there. <laughs> And I'd be like, that's not what you fucking said. Yeah, you said, can you cut in front of me? And not just, like, T-pose in the fucking... Oh, yeah, can I cut in front of you? <laughs> no, you can't fucking do that. Why would you think you can do that? Jesus Christ. I know we're in the back, right? But, like, that's you can't just do whatever you want to yeah. people. <laughs> I'm just like, you're Jack White fans. Listen to the morals of his songs, which is don't be a fucking dickhead just because you can. You know, and I think that's the thing, too. I feel like um a lot of the people that were like that, that actually like I think because uh, you made a point afterwards that was like there were two types of people there. Yeah. The younger Jack White fans that mm-hmm. only know like Seven Nation Army and then the older ones that are more like, yeah, I like the old stuff, you know. I think more of the people that were like into the old stuff happened to be on the balcony. Yeah, I think they were maybe rich enough to buy. Yeah, balconies. they were like, I I've accumulated enough wealth since the release of the first White Stripes album mm-hmm. that I can afford a seat. Absolutely, yeah. So we got a lot of the people that were just like, I want to drink, I want to party, I want to, I want to imagine that I'm at the fucking, I'm at the 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 Super Bowl. Yeah, you know, they thought they were at like a fucking stadium. And then I think that was really funny because I think we got a very sentimental Jack White. Oh, yeah. It felt really like was very like, yeah, it was very sensitive that night. He apparently cried twice, right? He did. Yeah. Yeah. He was talking about like Atlanta porches and stuff. He kept doing this like. And I don't know what it was. I, I and bet. I just remember being like, "What porches, man? I've I've, I've never I've seen any porches. Around. I've seen more porches in New Orleans. Is that what you're talking about? Yeah, like the I've shotgun house porches. I've seen more porches on the drive up here in uh, in Florida than I've seen in Atlanta. Yeah, I don't know. But he was talking about like walk around Atlanta and you'll see people's porches. And I was like, "Do you mean like balconies? Yeah, because I think that's the only thing. I'm I like, saw. where are you walking? Like, no, I don't, I've lived in Atlanta. I don't really remember a por. I remember a balcony. We had like a little balcony porch. Yeah, and I was trying to think like, okay, is he like driving to like the suburbs? Because like, like he has to be close to the venue. And between the venue are three different hotels I mean, and like, then a shopping mall. Like, wrap around porches, like Southern plantation style porches. But then I'm like, I don't know if those exist in the, uh, are those in like the fancy in- houses? Because people, you don't really own a house. In Atlanta, <laughs> you you know, live in an apartment. Yeah. So I don't I don't really know what the fuck he was talking about, but he was talking about like southern porches style where like you're a kid and you're biking along and you see like this uh person that you want to like uh get to know better or you want to date or, it's or you want to read their book, you know. And they're reading a book, but you <laughs> and you try to read the the title of the book, but you're too far away. It was so specific. And honestly, I really need to get a subscription to that like concert thing to nugs, try and, yeah. and, nugs and try to figure out what the fuck exactly he said. <laughs> I will say too, by the way, pro tip to all concert goers, get earplugs. Holy fuck. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow. There was a, I think I tried to be like, let me hear like the original Jack White 
in live in person let me take out my earbuds and i put it right back in because i was like i'm gonna fucking go deaf yeah i think uh, at the end of the show <laughs> like there's a at the end of the show and the end of the con uh encore he left the guitar down oh, and had yeah, a guitar feedback had feedback and then so when all the lights came i was like oh it's probably a good time now i to still hear the guitar earbuds. feedback but it's probably not that loud took nope. it out immediately fucking pain in my yeah. ear and <laughs> yeah. i was like all right never mind oops Oopsie poopsie. Oopsie poopsies. Which honestly, I'm glad we did that because we had to walk in Atlanta at night. Back. Deaf. Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah, I would not have wanted to do that. Yeah, no. But it was a really good show, honestly. It was a really good show, I'm yeah. actually really glad that um, I was thinking about it later because you seemed to be liking Jack Whitemore and I'm like, it's fucking perfect for you because of all of the s- fucking stuff I've accumulated. <laughs> I'm like, you can be like, yeah, I, li- I like that song of Jack White, and it'll be like, I have it on vinyl. <laughs> <laughs> I have it on vinyl yeah, three different that. ways. Yeah. I no, yeah, no, original. it was definitely, I, I, I think it was, I think despite how bad the rest of the trip was. Yeah, I it was pretty think, bad the rest of the trip. I think it was worth it. We'll talk about that in a second. But yeah, I think it was still worth it to go up there and see in person. Yeah, I just, I'm I, not going to do that again anytime soon. I, I think uh, two things are, are not going to happen again. I'm never driving more than four hours i think anywhere yeah back and forth um i can miss atlanta i don't <laughs> yeah i need to go there for the rest of my life i think yeah actually. i think atlanta uh, you know like i it really sucks too because i think um we went to atlanta again in 2019 and i think i had a a, a dumb juvenile like hatred of it just because i didn't like driving it, the driving the is issue. bad yeah the driving was bad i feel like after driving up it wasn't as bad driving back down I think I was just more anxious about like money and overall and all this other shit, which we'll get into that. Yeah, money is a bad. Problem. Yeah, but um, what um, I think um, I think it's just like because it was an unfamiliar place and I was getting used to it. I think this time around it was a little bit easier. And yeah. also, I got a speeding ticket the first time I got up there. Oh my god! Which yeah. fucking I'm actually upset about that now because everyone else on that fucking highway driving back down and driving up was going like 85, and I'm like, what the fuck? I got fucking ticketed. Maybe all those fucking cops got COVID. Maybe. Fucking COVID, baby! <laughs> but no, yeah, uh, no, fucking... Yeah. I don't know, I was, so I was kind of annoyed at that, but, um, I think... <sighs> Where do we... Okay. Okay. Uh, the bad. The bad. So, do you just want to go day by day? Yeah, so I was anxious driving up there, and I was oh, also yeah. tired, because we woke up at, like, 9 to get ready to go. Yeah, so, which I don't really know why we did that. I think it was because there was stuff that we had to pack still. Oh, uh, we just left it up to that day. You're right. Which yeah. makes sense because I'm Kinda a lazy dumb. fucking asshole. But like, I woke <laughs> up early. That's the way we do it. You had know. a cup of coffee, made some for the to, uh, to go. Driving up, I got anxious specifically because there were a lot of trucks. Mm. Ironically, uh, now that I play Truck Simulator, <laughs> and it calms um, you down, and now yeah. it calms me down. Yeah, but okay, it's different because like it's real life, right? <laughs> yeah. Um, I I was weird because like all the trucks were going like 65 Mm -hmm. in the right lane, 70 in the middle lane, and then cars were going 90 in the left lane, which is where Uh, I would have wanted to be. Yeah. And I think there were at least double digits times when someone was riding my ass when they could have gone around me. Yeah, because uh, I was going, I was going pretty fast. I felt like, yeah, and I was like, why the fuck are all these guys on? They're gonna get me a traffic ticket. I'm getting anxious about it, right? And I was anxious about money, which is gonna play a pivotal role uh, yeah. later. Yeah, because like the, uh, a lot of shit's been going on to money where wise. money wise, like we're trying to get things uh, off the ground. And I, I, uh, I did two things that were kind of dumb for the trip. Uh, before the trip, were dumb. During the trip, smartest thing I've done. Um, I was going to do a balance transfer so I didn't have to pay interest on a credit card yeah. that was coming out and it came out recently. It doesn't matter now. Um, and I also got the capture card for the Let's Plays with it. Yeah. And that apparently took up a lot of money and I think a couple other like little transactions. So I had a lot less money than I anticipated and I got worried about it. Yeah, we were worried about money, but we could probably figure out money once we were there. Yeah, and we and we were going to. <laughs> yeah. Um, we budgeted a lot. We uh, we got there. We talked about the anxiety a lot because I was a well, yeah. And yeah. I got a little sad because um, I was saying that I wanted to do this very specific thing because I grew up there and I wanted to do this like thing for growing up. But we didn't because of the money issues. We didn't have enough money to do it. 
Yeah. So then I, I got kind of sad and then we talked it out and yeah. with the anxiety thing. And I kind of realized, I was like, I don't really need to do that. Yeah, true. <laughs> it's okay. And I, it's I, not I, also, I was really worried about like, what is it like ruining a lot of those memories too? And I, I you and know. Yeah. It's like, no, like, you know, yeah. they're my memories. You can't ruin them. You know That's what I mean? true. Yeah. But so that happens. Um, We stayed at an Airbnb in a condo. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Okay. There's yeah. a condo and, um, there's no on-site parking at this condo. Yeah. Uh, so we parked. <laughs> Pretty much no Airbnbs in the area had on-site parking. Yeah, the only way to get on-site parking was to go to a hotel. Yeah. And... The hotels were, like, ridiculously priced. Well, I think they were actually priced about the same no, amount. No, That's really? why we went to the Airbnb. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, the price for the hotels would have been, like, $300, $400, and the Airbnb was $220. Yeah, so we figured, yeah, we did that. So that's why we took took the Airbnb. There yeah. was two Plus parking. Plus you would have to pay for parking at the hotels as well. True, and I, I wonder now if the parking might have actually been cheaper. Because the only price that we saw was the uh, valet pricing. Well, um, yeah, that's yeah. what that, yeah. But I mean, the, even the, because we went to a, we went to the hotel that Loki was shot at. I can't think, I think it was a Hilton <laughs> or whatever. Yeah. I think they had self-parking on site. But I, mean, I don't know. They didn't say anything on the thing. But yeah. that's also a different hotel, and that was an expensive hotel. It doesn't matter. So <laughs> right next to the condo, there was a parking lot and a parking garage. Mm. And I thought, dumbly, mm -hmm. that the parking garage would probably be better because there was an attendant there. Well, that was the one that had the most best reviews. And the reviews. better reviews, yeah. And the that other was one... also the one that was uh, advertised to us by our Airbnb host. Yeah, that was like one of the main ones. And I think there were a couple others around that we could have gone to. But we went to that one because it was close enough. It was only a short walk up hill to get to the Airbnb. Yeah. We park there. We go to the Airbnb and check in and do all that stuff. But and then... while we park there, this fucking guy. No, that's that's after the second time. No, the first time. The fucking, the first time the guy is looking at us and doesn't come to tell us like, what we have to do with the ticket or anything. Yeah, okay, yeah, you're but right. But he's staring us down. Yeah. Like we're fucking being crazy people. Yeah, like we're we're some assholes. And like it was completely unnerving. So anyway, we go into the fucking hotel, we check in. Check in, yeah. We decide we want to get Pizza Hut for dinner. Because I thought, and this was a smart move, I hope. It was really it, smart. Is, you know, you get one pizza each and then one half will be dinner. That won't be dinner basically making it five bucks a meal for dinner yeah and i was like all right cool and there was like a deal or whatever so we went yeah. we picked it up we parked in the middle of the road <laughs> it felt like yeah uh because it was just off the side of like a oh, thing yeah there was like a specific place to park for the yeah pizza but like it didn't even it wasn't like supposed to be a parking place i feel like it was just the right lane no it was specific oh, you it could was? see okay, good. like it was yeah all right um but yeah when we left the parking lot to go get the pizza we had to pay ten dollars or no fifteen dollars it was ten bucks first ten time. bucks um which to me i thought this was this was a red flag and i should have realized it at the time but the guy like got out of his thing comes up to us and takes our ticket and goes mm, ten dollars like he just made it up in his head but I think that was supposed to be because I guess that's I think that was the daily rate and then there was an overnight rate. Right. I mean yeah. it was and like that's what. But, but then it does, it's it does like, seem like it's weird. Fucking sus considering what happens later on. Yeah, it's still sus. Yeah, you're right. Um. So then we're like, oh, we know we want to do the all day stuff, like you know, like what blah blah blah. And he goes, well, now you can't because <laughs> fucking yeah. you should have told me beforehand. Which, I mean, to me is like, that's dumb. That's dumb. Why didn't you come out and ask us what we were doing then? That's not... And also, or just charge us just the charge $25 us. now. Yeah. Yeah, it was dumb. So we <sighs> we paid the 10 bucks just to leave. Yeah, And anyway. then we came back and, and prepaid for two nights. Which was $50. 50 bucks exactly. It was 25 bucks a night, which will be an important detail in a second. And the guy, uh, I was the one that uh, gave the card... And the guy asks me, like, for how many nights? And I go, two nights. And he, like, looks up and blah, blah, blah. He types something. And then I think he exits it out like he's, like, it's wrong. And then does it again. Really? I didn't know. Yeah. Shit. And I was like, oh, he must have messed up or something. But I also noticed that they were physically typing in yeah, the price. Yeah, it was weird because it looked like, charge. Um, yeah, because they didn't have, like, a, it, it looked like they didn't have, like, a computer no. set up or, like, a, an actual, like, it was POS, just like, like, what do you want to charge them? Yeah. $50 and then swipe. So then I was like, okay. That's a weird way of doing it, yeah. That's kind of strange. So we leave. Once again, another red flag I should have realized and said, talked about. 
<laughs> and then so we go and we take our pizza and we fucking we go up there and uh this is an, i think an important detail is like it's like 10 o'clock at this point and i'm budgeting for the next day and the day after yeah so i'm like okay we gotta get gas on the way back we gotta right um get lunch and breakfast some at some point tomorrow we have How about are we gonna do it 130 bucks left give or take yeah so i'm budgeting it as much as i can mm -hmm. and um the next day we wake up oh my up. god we wake up to fire alarm yeah, so the building had an emergency because apparently it was 420 Fest when we were there. I think the building is old. I think that because our, our Airbnb host was very much like, no candles. No candles. No nothing, smoking. Nothing that makes smoke. Please, like, God, no. Please, oh my God, don't do it. <laughs> For the love of God, don't fucking do it. Which most Airbnbs are like, yeah, don't smoke. That's a bad thing. But I think candles is kind of like a, I mean, It's okay. like, whoa, yeah, something's going on. Yeah. I think it's just very susceptible to smoke. Um, So we wake up to the fire alarm. We get out of there because we think, shit, man, the building might be on fire. Fuck. Yeah, I'm like, all right, just gotta grab wallet, blah, 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 whatever. You <laughs> I'm know? wearing a shirt that has frog and toad on it that says, fuck the police. And I'm like, hell yeah, fucking. <laughs> Which I don't realize because I wore that to bed. Yeah. <laughs> I think this is a, I think that's a really important detail actually. For, for later. And so then we go down and and we go down to the yeah, we're lobby. We're just standing in the lobby. No like, one's like rushing or anything. So it's like, all right, well, probably not too big of a deal. We were like, well, we might as well go get coffee. Yeah, we find out that the only coffee places around us. We we decided to do Starbucks because I think I had money on a Starbucks card, and I was yeah. like, all right, it'll save some money. And then we went to a, a hotel Starbucks, and then everything was expensive. Yeah, everything was expensive as fuck. But oh, like, a guy tried to sell us weed on the street. Oh, yeah, but we were so, like, out of it and, like, yeah. dumb and white. We thought he was just asking us how we were doing. Because other people in Atlanta were like, how are you Hello. doing? Yeah. Because they're trying to scam us. And uh, <laughs> yeah. fucking, uh, so this guy goes, what? <laughs> and we're like, we're good. And he goes... I said, do you smoke? Like, really, like, yeah. what the fuck is wrong with you? Are you, like, mentally, <laughs> you know? And uh, we were like, oh, ha, 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 ha. <laughs> no, we don't. We're good. Move on. Everything's fine. We don't have drugs. We don't have money. You're yeah. not going to get me this time, undercover <laughs> cop. He just fucking left. Bounced, and we were like, yeah. all right, cool. I don't know. Maybe he meant, like, do we smoke meth or something? I don't know. No, I think it was weed. I mean, it was 420 Fest, right? Like, I feel like... That's true. Uh, so you noticed that there was a lot of undercover cops, and I think that was kind of a weird there thing. There were a lot. Yeah. There was a lot of cars with the fucking the cop thing on the top of them. Yeah. Running around. And I was like, what the fuck are with all these fucking undercover cops? This is fucking weird. Yeah. So we walked to... <laughs> all right, so all that happens, we walked to yeah. Starbucks. It's like a half a mile walk or some shit. Yeah. Um, we go there, it's the hotel that they filmed or got the base plate for the time variance thing in Loki where it's yeah. like the weird elevators and like the... So we're sitting there and we're like, this place is fucking familiar. And I'm looking it up while Sarah's in the bathroom I'm like, oh yeah, this is the Loki place, knew it. Yeah. And I take photos from mom, that ungrateful bitch. <laughs> um, and then... Yeah. Uh, what is it? Fucking, um... We get coffee. Water costs a two dollars because, yeah. Like, yeah, which is stupid because it's a hotel. Crazy. But it's a hotel, so whatever. I should have expected that. Um, it should be noted at this point: the coffee after the Starbucks gift card, the coffee and water was only like nine bucks total. Yeah. Um, we should have had like a hundred and thirty. Yeah, bucks we should total. have had like a hundred and thirty bucks. But I was like, okay, you know, ten bucks total, I can work with that. Whatever. Uh, we go back to the hotel, relax on the balcony. We're talking about, oh, you know what? You Atlanta know what? actually this is might really be nice. This is a nice place. Maybe we should, you know, I consider, really like this place. If we're going to move out of Florida, this might be a place to actually consider moving to. Hmm. Um, then we go and get food at Wahlburgers. Because that's the closest cheap lunch place. And we also had. the only place that was fucking open. <laughs> yeah, everything Because there was, was like a, there was like a hotel restaurant we wanted to try and go to that was just straight closed, even though Google said it was open. Yeah. Uh, it was really was, just a fucking. It was, a, it was a yeah. It was a goddamn bust, and then your card declines when we try to pay. Yeah, for the credit card declines, and I'm like, wait, that doesn't make sense. Is there a problem with the machine? Maybe there's a problem with the machine or something talking about my card. Like, oh no, they don't know I'm in Atlanta, which is weird because I already paid for shit in Atlanta. Right, that doesn't make sense. So I give them another card that just luckily had enough money. Yeah, and I'm like, oh, thank God we didn't go to the fucking Hooters or the yeah, <laughs> the or like the Hard Rock hard Cafe. Rock. Thank goodness this was this was the cheap place, the fifteen dollar burger place. And this whole time I'm like, you know. 
I want to try to get like a poster, Jack White. Yeah, like you want to have a nice drink at the concert. And I'm like, okay, I'm going to make sure that we can do that. Oh, then. Yeah, I want to make sure that. So then we go home, we go to our fucking hotel and we look up what's wrong with his car. Yeah, I have, I, the, the Airbnb had a desk. I was going to, I was planning on working on this vacation. <laughs> and, um, Oops. Yeah. Um, fucking, um, the, uh, uh, card had an unexpected $125 purchase on it. Which is really from cool. From the parking place that happened two hours after, after we, we left. Yeah. So we left the parking place at 10 o'clock. I look, I look at the card and I'm like, okay, budgeting with how much money is on the card. Yeah. And then at 11 o'clock at the parking place, 125 bucks is charged to the card for some reason. There was no mention of like a, a, yeah, a you, pending balance or like, yeah, a, like you, you know. need to pay this up front. Yeah. No. And uh, I know that it's not, it was not, it was not a, um, uh, what is it like a like a balance or whatever that was supposed yeah. to be like a like oh is this on the off chance that you stay longer than yeah no it wasn't that it went through three days later and stayed there that's how I know it was a scam at this point. really yeah it's still in there I had to dispute it like I had to go in and dispute it myself did they ask you for anything else not yet they had to contact the merchant first yeah what they do uh nothing yet <laughs> I'm waiting wow what the fuck yeah i actually uh i gotta pee real quick but um if you want i can look while i'm peeing and see if there's any updates holy shit bro so, me, i'll be right back hold on oh my god what any update uh no update so i i put in the dispute on um what is it april 29th it says and then they contacted merchant at may 2nd they gave me conditional credit that matches up to 125. Okay. So basically, as long as the the dispute goes through, I'm gonna keep that 125. Okay. But if it doesn't go through, that credit goes away, and I'm just fucked. <laughs> what the fuck? Yeah. So um, we don't. So uh, go to go to buymecoffee.com forward slash APWSCR. <laughs> You'll see a goal for three hundred dollars because I only get fifty five percent of the revenue. That comes from the podcast. So and the next uh, one is uh, five hundred dollars for legal fees. For legal fees, um, yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, no. So what happened was, um, uh, one twenty five got charged to the card. I, I'm trying to remember where I was. Oh, okay. So we we find out all that shit happens. Right? Yeah, and then we go to the parking garage to ask what the fuck is going well, on. Because we also look for like a boot or something, right? Like yeah, we try to see we if like thought, like your car was gonna get towed or something. Yeah, it was like okay, did they tow it? And they had the card information on file. Um, apparently. Uh, this is this is what we were told. Everything from this point, I'm going to say allegedly scammed um, during yeah. this alleged scam that happened. They apparently don't save any of the... Um, I don't believe that at all. Yeah, I don't believe that. They apparently don't save any of the card information. But I feel like if you just wrote down the fucking card, you Which could probably type it in. Which now I'm wondering if that was what he just typed in the last four numbers or something. Maybe. I don't know. And then print it out for himself. Maybe. But like it's also weird because I feel like... How the fuck you wouldn't be able to it goes to the company it doesn't go to you I don't know why the fuck you're not if, just on the machine that's true yeah I don't know if it's, it's a, all fucking printing receipts then he could have just done that and yeah I don't know why he would unless they get like commission for whatever it is that they work I'm like come on man, <laughs> fucking but like okay so we, we go there's a new guy there there's no boot on the car nothing happened to my car it's in the same fucking spot that it was in yeah so nothing happened and we talked to the guy for like that's there for like 30 minutes trying yeah. to figure out what happened. And he goes, you know, he's like, oh, this has never happened before. And well, I can't call corporate because they're closed and that's what I would need to do. So you just need to come back tomorrow. And I'm telling him, no, like we're fucked. Like you took all our money. Like we're fucked. Yeah. And especially because now like we didn't have gas to get home. Yeah. Like we would have been like straight fucked. Um, if, if yeah. And he was like, oh, I don't know what to do, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, do you have a manager? Or is there some other guy I can talk to? Do you know who would be on duty while this happened? And he goes, oh, yeah, let me call a guy. So then he puts me on the phone with some fucking guy that's on the phone, that's hanging At out with his kids. his kids. Yeah. And uh, I'm talking to that guy, and fucking this guy is like, yeah, I don't know. The other guy doesn't have the ability to open the computer room, so... There's not really much we can do. Just call corporate, show up tomorrow. And I'm like, no, um, that's not going to happen. And he goes, okay, well, I'll look in the computer room when I get there. But I get there at eight. Concert starts at seven. And <laughs> I fucking, 
uh i'm like okay and are you gonna call me back and he goes yeah just give the receipt to the other guy not gonna do that yeah that's fucking ridiculous no why would i do and I'm that like, how about you give me your phone number and i will send you a photo of the receipt and he goes okay <laughs> and so then we send him a photo of the receipt to this guy's number and i go and how about i give you my number and you call me when you get here and, and then uh, he spent 10 minutes making sure that he had the right number yeah he, he kept fucking up a number like he would get a number right and then immediately get another number wrong get and that then number get the, wrong in the next one yeah after getting the number that he got wrong right and so i was like fucking this guy's not gonna fucking call me he did call me actually i just was in a concert and didn't fucking answer him because i like wasting their goddamn time yeah and honestly yeah i didn't after the concert i didn't feel like going back no because fucking this is it takes up your emotional time that's the point yeah and like credit what credit's do it fucking worked yeah it did yeah and then um <sighs> Okay, this is where I'm gonna I'm gonna uh what is it? Uh we, we went back to our back to the Airbnb. Oh my god, and they, then we called fucking Citibank and had the worst yeah, customer Citibank, service I've ever had. Yeah, Citibank we called the first guy and uh the what is it? The guy's like, Yeah, there's nothing we can do and then you come into the call. I have to fucking approve you as an authorized person. Which makes the call. sense because yeah. I'm not the whole, the holder of this credit. Yeah. Account. So I, I, you know, I do all the shit. I, <laughs> but I'm telling him like, bro, we don't have any money to get home. Like you're stranding us by saying yeah. that there's nothing that we can do. And he goes, you know, he doesn't acknowledge me and then ask Josh to authorize me. And Josh does. And then he goes, well, there's nothing else that we can do. Blah, blah, blah. Just says the same fucking thing and then i'm like well then we need to speak we need to speak to a manager because fucking this is an escalated situation we're obviously escalated please escalate this to a manager and then this guy goes your manager is gonna say the same thing that, that i say <laughs> and i'm like that doesn't fucking matter yeah that's not I fucking it just kills me so much because i work in customer service and i know how much when a customer is like fucking being a fucking asshole how much I have to be nice to them. And I'm like going softball on this guy. Yeah. Like, like yeah, okay, I'm upset, but I'm not like cursing you out or anything. Yeah, I'm just saying you're, like, you're just not gonna like, please help us, you know? And he just doesn't want to do that. And he goes, oh, the manager's blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, that literally doesn't make any sense. Put a manager on. Yeah, put the manager on and like actually <laughs> help. Because, like. So then this pussy ass bitch goes and talks to his manager and says like, Oh, fucking, uh, you know, you know, he gives him the lowdown on us and the manager immediately comes into the call with, yeah, I know what's going on. Uh, there's nothing we can do. So he fucking puts it in the manager's mind that we can't do anything, which is fucking hilarious. It's such bullshit. Yeah, it's fucking. Look at the account. Like, just look at it. Stop it with yeah, this fucking really weird, wild, petty like, ass we're shit. We're trying to explain, like, hey, we don't have any money. We're stuck in a city. We're not gonna be able to get home. Yeah. Is there anything we can do? And. So At then this point, guy is like, no, there's nothing, blah, blah, blah. And then Josh goes, can you give me a, like, like a, a credit, credit line increase? increase? Yeah. Like I'm doing, I'm doing this guy's job for him. Yeah. There's no reason that this guy is, should not be helping. And so then this guy goes, uh, uh, yeah, okay, we can do that. And then makes Josh go through the entire process. Laughs at my income. <laughs> yeah. Josh is like, you know, he asks for his yearly income and Josh says 20,000 and the guy goes, <laughs> And I was like, I'm going to fucking kill him. I'm going to fucking kill this guy through the phone. Thanks for doxing my income, Sarah. <laughs> nah, it's fine. You're I, you know, fucking whatever. It's a fucking fine income. Jesus. Yeah. But, um, yeah. <sighs> and then it doesn't go through because my card's too new. Which is like, why even try it in the first place then? Yeah. that. <laughs> if you knew that. But, I mean, maybe he was just trying to do something to get us off the phone. Yeah. And then he, because I had to be the first person to be like, okay, there's probably other things. You're just not doing your job. I and come up the first thing. I basically almost start crying to where I'm like, we're going to be fucking trapped here. There's no way we just got scammed out of all of our money. Now we're just fucked. There's nothing we can do. They can't dispute the charge because it's still pending. And it can, and since pending charges, we're not liable for, except for the fact that I don't have a credit available. Because, right. Yeah. It just takes away your credit. D yeah, exactly. Which is like fucking insane. So then the guy goes, well, there is this other thing we can do. We can take off this balance transfer. And I see Sarah's face. I want to I want to specify. I see Sarah's face. I just start laughing because the balance transfer was like the whole situation. The whole reason that we were in this hole in the first place. But we weren't even really in a hole. We were just tight. We were just tight. Yeah. And like it was literally like <sighs> that was the thing that was like, oh, this is going to be the thing that gets us home. 
Yeah. And then I was thinking like, okay, is this like a I is this like a I accidentally saved the trip moment where I was like, oh, because I <laughs> You didn't I ruin the trip in the first place. The scammers ruined the yeah, trip. Yeah, the scammers ruined the trip, but I mean, did I save us by if like okay, I feel like the scammers started with a higher number. Yeah. Alleged scammers, by the way, again, allegedly. Uh this is this this con- this conversation is privileged. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Uh, allegedly, I think they started with a higher number. Like, all right, let's see if three hundred works. Oh, that didn't work. Uh, it didn't go. It got can It didn't want to go through. Uh, one twenty five. Oh, that one works. Because it seems like because yeah. it was a, it was like a it was a twenty five amount. It feels like they were trying to see like, oh, can we accidentally how can many we nights, charge? Yeah. yeah, how can we charge them for? Yeah, and they they can't do shit about. Uh, but yeah, no fucking um, what is it? Uh, uh, uh what is it? Because I had that balance transfer, I feel like I would have gotten scammed a lot more. I feel like yeah, maybe who knows? I'm and you know, so I'm part of me is like fucking. It's caused a lot of stress on the way up there, but Thank holy you. shit, did it save? Maybe it might have saved us from being completely fucked. But we were able to take that balance transfer off and have like three hundred dollars worth of credit. And then I was like, I told the guy, I was like, you need to tell that other guy, you need to teach him about de-escalating guests because de-escalating customers. Because he did not do a good job. We were obviously escalated when we started. And then when we talked to him more, we became more escalated. And he did nothing but egg us on to yeah. get more escalated. And then the guy on the phone completely ignores me and goes, have a nice day. And then I hang up and I'm like, all right, cool. And then uh, Jack White. <laughs> yeah. And then we were like, well, time to go be happy and go to Jack White. I had a and then good we did a cry half after walk. that. Yeah, like it was terrible. Because yeah, I didn't want to fucking drive. The whole point we got the Airbnb so we could walk, but like, holy shit! Yeah, man. I don't want to fucking look at the fucking parking guy in the face again. Yeah. Oh god. Fucking awful. <laughs> and then we had Waffle House on the way back, and that Which was, was like, really that was heavenly. But beyond that, yeah, getting scammed really fucked me up. Wow, dude, that was terrible, man. And honestly, still has fucked me up because there's a there's a chance that my dispute won't go through. Cause I, I honestly I don't I don't see a reason why Citibank would give a shit. That it's 125 extra bucks in their pocket. Why the fuck would I they? I mean, care? if it doesn't go through, I'm gonna DM them. So yeah, they can reopen it because they were in my DMs like, stop tweeting about us, and I'm like, no. No, yeah, I'll I'll keep being vocal about how yeah, shitty their banking system is. You're being is. shitty. And like the second that like I pay off the rest of my debt, that's the fucking one that's gonna be gone yeah they they hook you in with a zero percent apr and then are like fuck you if you want i can i can dm them the fucking uh details of the transaction so they look into it uh i mean or do you want to wait for the dispute we'll wait until the dispute yeah i have to hold on to all the shit for at least 90 days Mm. so yeah it's fucking isn't 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 the economy fun. fun isn't isn't this whole system of debt great Anyway, so the parking garage was 31 uh, Baker Street. They allegedly garage. scammed us. Do not go to that. Triple A. If you're going to go to that parking garage, get a receipt and also pay in cash. Or don't do it because we also fucking paid in cash and got a, or we paid and got a receipt. Yeah, we, yeah, we, we got a receipt. receipt. Yeah, that's why, like, I'm, that's why I'm adding a, on paying cash. Like, I get it. Pay in cash. But like we fucking got a fucking receipt and that me- that meant shit. Why would paying in cash do anything else? Because you can't get scanned on your credit card. I guess so. That's but it. like fucking all the re- all the um, comments on it were like, oh, don't yeah. pay in cash. So then we pay with a card. Yeah, and then because they're just not going to give a shit about your receipt. If you come back, they're going to double charge you. It's like. That's what I yeah, thought the honestly, scam was yeah, going you can to all be. See, yeah, you can all see the fucking reviews on your own. Yeah, don't go to. Don't just go don't Atlanta. go there. Don't just go don't go. Fuck Atlanta. I don't want to say that. I really wanted to give Atlanta a chance Honestly, after yeah. after seeing that. Oh, it was a, oh, this is where Loki was filmed. My dumb fucking peanut brain was like, oh, they they make movies here. Great. This would be a good place to move if I ever wanted to actually go back into that career path. It was fucking terrible, man. Yeah, it wasn't it wasn't great. And, and this also is like, all the Confederate flags we saw here. Well, not in Atlanta. That but, was mostly in Florida. Yeah, you're yeah. right. But yeah, <laughs> yeah, damn, not in Atlanta. <laughs> you keep trying to blame it on fucking. I'm gonna blame it on, on Georgia, on Tift County. <laughs> I mean, yeah, Georgia is fucking Confederate as fuck, but like most of the Confederate flags we saw were in North Florida. Yeah, you're not wrong. Yeah, traitors. They weren't even in it. They weren't even in it. <laughs> there wasn't even a fucking state yet. God. But yeah, no fucking um. Yeah. I don't know, man. I wanted to give Atlanta a chance. I know. I felt the same. We saw the we saw the Adult Swim studios and we were like, hell yeah, and then. <laughs> 
And that was like the only saving grace. And we were like, get us the fuck out of the get city. Get us out of the city. Yeah, so that's why we didn't, we that's didn't why do, we didn't a do a podcast. podcast. Yeah, just all that stress from the past <sighs> three weeks has been piling on. Jesus fucking Christ, man. Sometimes it's hard to put yourself in front of a fucking thing of lights and two cameras to try to fucking you record know, something. Record and then be happy. And then when, you start recording and then you're like, oh, actually, I have all this shit going on in the background that... Right. Is gonna come out now because uh, uh, I'm uh, too stressed and I didn't yeah. realize it. So when God is taking a big old shit on your life, honestly, fucking yeah. <laughs> God damn. But we're back. We're back. And we've also we've made it up to you guys because there's gonna be extra content coming out this week. We yeah, got for let's sure. plays on Kirby coming out this week yeah, on YouTube.com forward slash APWSR Productions. If you're not there already, you fucking audio only listeners, bitches, bitches. I'm happy to be back, though. Yeah, me too. I'm happy. I'm, we're finally in the groove of things, and I'm happy that, like, we can actually yeah. make content again. Yeah, it'll be nice. Yeah, it'll be real nice. Mm. But yeah, uh, don't go Don't go to uh, Atlanta unless you're flying in and Ubering and... Just don't go. Don't go we Atlanta. stayed in the hotel district. We stayed in the hotel district. That don't all go. happened in the hotel district. Yeah. That wasn't, like, downtown. Yeah, like, was, you know, that wasn't, like, in the fucking terrible area. It was, like... It was in the place that was meant for tourists, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, if you're a tourist, you're gonna, get, go. you're gonna get fucking scammed. Don't go there. It's bad. Pending uh, dispute. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Or we're, we're back. I want to love my hometown, man. I really do. But now I'm, like, maybe I'm just, like, from nowhere. Maybe it's from nowhere. You're from Orlando now, Sarah. I don't want to do that. I don't want to claim Orlando at all. You're 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 from the place where Disney grooms all their kids. Exactly. <laughs> uh, uh, you want to take a quick ad break and then get into listener stories? Sounds good to me. I get more yeah. alcohol. Hi everyone. Hello. Welcome to the ad read. Gabagool. Are you enjoying this podcast so far? Well, you should like and subscribe on YouTube and rate us five stars on Spotify or Apple. But Josh, I already did that. How can I help you more? Well, if, you, if, you're, if you're moved by the story of us getting scammed, we have a couple ways that you can support us financially. What are those? Well, there's... Okay, so you can go to patreon.com forward slash APWSTR if you want to give us a monthly donation and you get exclusive content and uh, access to uh, early shit. What? That sounds perfect for yeah. me. Actually, uh, as of this recording, we have... Um, um, one let's play already out for uh, Patreon, and I think we have another one out tomorrow. So hopefully two by the time gaming this goes out. Gaming content. Yeah, we're starting working on uh, gaming content, and oh Patreons are God. currently the first ones to see it. So go over to patreon.com forward slash apwstr, and you'll get to see it first. Fuck. But if you don't want any of that bullshit, yeah, I don't like wanna, that bullshit. You actually, donate to the, the help Josh recover from a scam fund. Yeah. Go on over to buymecoffee.com forward slash APWSTR and you can support us with a one-time donation. Coffee's are only three bucks. You can donate as many coffees as you'd like. And if you say something, we'll uh, read it out for you if you want us to. As long as it's not racist or homophobic. But um, there's also a third way now. Oh my if God. If you're on YouTube, apparently you can just straight, there's a thing called Super Thanks. Oh yeah. So it's like Super Chats, but it's for videos. So if you want to give us a Super Thanks on YouTube, it'll go in as like a comment. And then uh, we can also read that too if you want us to read it. Please yeah, specify if you, want if you want us to read stuff, please. We'll we'll assume yes, but if you don't want this to be read, just let us know. Yeah, say don't read this. Don't read this. Big yeah. letters. Do not read. Put a, put a, a gif of a red alarm going, wee you, wee you, and we won't read it. <laughs> yeah. That's the only way we'll not read it. That's a joke. But yeah. yeah, those are other ways to do it. I'm going to work on mugs, and we'll have yeah. mu our mug shop out soon. Eventually, I don't know. Will I ever design something? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> but uh, yeah, those are the ways to help us out financially. Um, we're working on getting more content out for you guys, and hopefully you guys enjoy the Let's Play content. If you guys don't have money, of course, just watch on YouTube. That's yeah, how we that get helps paid. Us. Well, yeah. yeah, that's, you know, watch. Uh, you, YouTube, you, TikTok, all that stuff. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So. Uh, back to the show. Thank you for watching. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you. Bye. It's listener story time. All right. Welcome back. Uh, it's uh, so I'm gonna give a disclosure before these listener stories. I don't remember any of them. We had them. No. We did them. We did them last week. I don't remember if any of them are like serious. I know or I vetted funny them. Or, I I vetted them too, so I think they're okay. Yeah. I actually had to get rid of I think a one or two because they weren't written well. To the yeah. point where Google was like, and I was just not feeling it. I'm sorry. I'm sorry to those I uh, deleted. Oh, please, yeah, those ones. 
please understand Shit, i couldn't read it and i was not in the mood it's not your fault you're not i don't think you guys were the assholes uh, either but um i want to write like, better stories kind of the asshole oh spicy <laughs> you want me to do it i want me yeah, to get into it. it let's do it all right you're all right. in you're good this is from cj he him oh fuck this is actually someone's writing in pretending to be me they just switched the initials around. Oh shit! Yeah, that would be really funny. That would be funny. I always wonder if that's gonna happen to one us. Day, so, one day, someone from one day, one of I... our enemies. Dun dun dun. Okay, but yeah, Put let's Derek see. over. All right, it. let's see. If, <laughs> let's see if CJ is actually just something I did in the past, and I have to atone for my sins right now. Yeah, let's go. Uh, am I the asshole for accusing on my girlfriend of having a crush on my friend? Yeah, I never did that. Okay, cool. I was gonna. Yeah, I don't think you've ever. You like Jack White? <laughs> He's your friend? That would be awesome. That would be cool. Alright, sorry. Yeah, okay, you can okay. start. So essentially, my girlfriend is not a very social person, but she agreed to go to this get-together with me to meet my friends. While we were there, I could tell she felt a little awkward, not really going out of her way to speak with people, but she was trying her best, and I appreciated it. At one point, one of my friends approached me and asked to discuss a personal problem in private, so I left her on the couch and told her I would be right back. I'll admit I lost track of the time and left her for longer than I meant to, but when I came back, I was shocked. She was still on the couch, but now she was sitting next to the host, a close friend of mine. Call him F. <laughs> Just send in the couch guy story. <laughs> kind of is. Kind of, yeah. Hold on. Okay, sorry. And they were having a pretty friendly conversation. While I walked up to them, F saw me and told me I should bring my girlfriend around more often before saying his goodbyes and leaving. We left shortly, too. While in the car, I told her how the situation on the couch made me feel uncomfortable. That was the whole situation. She promised me that it was nothing and that he saw her sitting alone and went out of his way to try uh, and integrate her in the conversation. And that was it. I chose to believe her and moved on. <laughs> If this is a favor I'm doing, believing her. That's so funny. It's like, bro, all she did was talk to the guy that owned oh, the one. couch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, listen. <laughs> That's all she did. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, guy, but like, come on. Come on. Jesus Christ, that's all she did. Okay. What are their pronouns again? He, him. Oh, is he him? Okay, yeah. cool. I'm just making sure. Jesus. Last week, a couple of my friends got together for dinner, and F specifically asked me to bring my girlfriend along. Oh. Why is that weird? Oh. <laughs> like, I feel like if he was fucking your girlfriend, he would be like, definitely don't bring that bitch. Yeah, I don't, yeah. Like, he would not try to be obvious I feel about like, it. Yeah, it would be, you have to hide it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I think no, they I just want there, I want there to be a chance between all three of us have really awkward chemistry because I'm fucking your girlfriend. Yeah, like why? <laughs> yeah, it's not like you'd be able to tell by how the the mood is here. I think you're I think you're overreacting a little bit. Maybe this guy has trauma about cheating, but like, yeah, I don't know. I just I, mean, I don't listen, think that's I just say, yeah, I don't think yeah, I don't think that's that's not your fault. But like, this is not. I'm not getting any of those vibes right now. Yeah, although this felt a little weird to me, I extended the invite and she agreed. At the table, someone from the group asked her if she was planning on going home for the summer, and that's when F chimed up, you're from Hamilton, right? I'm not gonna lie, that really upset me, because if the conversation from the party was quote-unquote nothing, how did he know such a personal detail about her? Bro, my guy, where she's from? Yeah, you put that on your resume. <laughs> you can find that on you white can, pages. You can go, there's this, you know, there's this little known website called Facebook.com. <laughs> Usually that's, if that's, if, okay, if there's a piece of information yeah. that people are willing to give up on the internet where your data is it's sold. It's probably going to be the first thing out of your mouth. It's going to be one of the first few things you, you talk about. Guy. That's yeah. one of the socially acceptable things. You don't go into a conversation and be like, oh, I have three hernias. Oh yeah, my dad's dead. Like, <laughs> my dad's not, dead, yeah. <laughs> maybe I would, but like, you Yeah, know. You, you, you know, you ease into conversation. <laughs> I feel like there's a level... And saying where you're from is negative fifteen on the on the uh, it how is crazy it is. Pretty funny to think like what could be like a too personal thing. Like, oh hey, uh, Op's girlfriend, you've had sex with twelve guys, right? <laughs> like over dinner. Like I can't imagine. You said you, have an, you, ha you, said you had a like a very loose pussy. You told me that. <laughs> can, can you, you elaborate? That, uh, can I get to know what, what that, that like? You you only <laughs> feel really thick cocks when and that's when I'm around. <laughs> What are you talking like, about, man? What are you man? talking 
fuck? What are you talking? How is he gonna fuck your girlfriend from knowing where she's from? <laughs> My guy. Okay. I sat there quietly until someone in the else in the group asked how we had met, and I responded, "Me or her other boyfriend." <laughs> How are you going to fuck yourself while you're you at it? You embarrassed yourself. Because <laughs> nobody else really understood what the fuck you were talking about. Cause the- <laughs> are you trying to do like a weird dad joke of like, but that's still not a good, it's, it's not a good not- bit. It's like, what are you talking about? What are dude? you fucking saying? Nobody's going to understand what you're saying. Can't wait to see at the three, at the hour and a half mark of this podcast. Minus one subscriber. <laughs> right. Yeah. I don't but know I mean, how also- you found this, this podcast. Did you think you're not the asshole? This yeah. Situation? I, you gotta be honest. Listen, uh, I'm sorry, man. I'm sorry. Okay. Let me read, read the sentence. It's really funny. I sat there quietly until somebody else in the group asked how we had met. And I responded me or her other boyfriend gesturing to F. The table went quiet for a few seconds, and my girlfriend didn't speak for the rest of the night. Wonder why. Yeah, I really wonder. Uh, She told me when we got in the car that it was really embarrassing, and now she's been acting different. I guess I may have overreacted, but I feel like it's unfair to say my feelings are invalid, especially after I expressed how their relationship made me uncomfortable. Am I the asshole? You're blowing things out of proportion. You're blowing things out of proportion. I guess... (laughs) Listen, I'm not going to invalidate your feelings, but also, unless you need to give more details, like, listen, I got cheated on by a girl before. Yeah, you got to have, like, if and you I have, had another friend. If that's the case, I can understand. Be a, a jealous person, like, maybe yeah. you have, like, insecurities about yourself. But those are that your being said, that's insecurities. Your insecurities. That's not like, uh, that's not like, uh, it, <laughs> Every person your girlfriend talks to is going yeah. to eventually blow them. <laughs> like, you know, like, yeah. you know, or be blown by her. No, it's not. I think, yeah, it's just a weird thing. Dude, he said her hometown. That's all he and said. And then you were like, wee, wee, wee. He got talked fucking... to her once on a couch and then got to know her hometown. Which I think, yeah, the more I think about it, the more like, okay, yeah, the first one of the first three questions I from? would ask, where are you from? Yeah. Especially if he doesn't know anything about, and that's like something they have in common, like, oh yeah, Hamilton, whatever the fuck yeah, that is. Yeah, I'm also from the, the place where that musical's made, yeah. <laughs> I love musicals. Do you like musicals? Yeah, that's and then you know, you just whatever. Sounds like a nice guy, honestly. Yeah, it seems fine, yeah. It seems like a good friend. A friend that wouldn't fuck your girlfriend. Yeah. Ironically, yeah. Well, he will once your girlfriend breaks up with you for being a dumbass. Yeah, so that's your this is your warning listener. I think she's gone already. I think probably you already what fucked up. A, what if we get a story three weeks from now that's like, so my boyfriend, um, <laughs> I've seen those happen. Like fucking like wives that were made out to be like evil or something will come back onto Reddit and be like, my husband posted on here saying that fucking I was a cheating whore when the truth was we had an open relationship and he didn't try to date any other people. And yeah. Yeah. And then like they give their side of the story and people are like, wow. Well, that was a very weird. Yeah. Some. And then with those, I always think it's like some 50 year old neck beard in their basement making up drama. Doing it as like a writing exercise. Yeah, honestly, I get that. But it's probably something real. I don't yeah, know. I don't know. Yeah, I don't. I don't it's kind of shitty. And you acted, you acted out a lot. Yeah, I, I mean, um, listen if if women have to be told constantly that they're being insecure and that they're acting jealous and oh, that you're it's being a bad insecure, hundred percent. Listen, hey, I got so insecurities do too. Don't worry, everybody does. I'm not gonna push it onto Sarah. Yeah, with, I'm not gonna like, push it onto Josh. And it, it it comes off pretty controlling because now, like, what? She can't talk to that guy? She can't talk to that guy. She can't give anyone in her hometown. She can't tell them what her... Like, she can't talk to people on a couch? Never. I saw a TikTok where there was a guy and a girl on a couch. Honestly, and that is kind of what makes this is the culture of, like... If your boyfriend doesn't do this, honey, he's cheating. And it's like, no, that's not true. Yeah, just because you reverse the genders doesn't make it yeah, right. Yeah, exactly. And it's like, you're also the biggest thing. I'm like, your girlfriend isn't social. Your girlfriend has the potential to make a friend. That's a big fucking deal when you're like in your 20s. You know what I mean? Yeah. Someone who only has like a couple friends. <laughs> yeah. Fucking. Uh, yeah. Make friends where you can. To completely embarrass her in front of a group of friends. Yeah, your really, friends. Yeah. Your friends. Yeah. That's shitty. That's, that's pretty really fucking shitty, shitty, man. You got to apologize for that. You got to fucking apologize. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I think if I were in this, like if it was a new relationship, especially and I was in the situation, I think I don't think I would continue. Yeah, <laughs> I would probably bounce at this point. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, no, not the asshole. Uh, no, no. No, 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 she's not the asshole. You're kind of the asshole. You're you're a little bit I'm of the asshole. Saying not the asshole. I know. So That's why when I saw listener. this, I was like giddy. I was like, oh my god, oh, we, we got one. We, we can say it. We can say we, it. We did it. We found one. But god, yeah, no. I'm so not. I'm so used to not saying saying not the asshole that I can't. I know. Yeah. I want to validate people's fucking shit, man. I know, but sometimes they're wrong. Sometimes you can't. Yeah. They didn't even give a reason as to why he did those things. Yeah. I'm sure you know that you're in the wrong a little bit. A little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, solved it though. We solved fucking it. solved it. And it doesn't necessarily mean that your jealous feelings are invalid. No, yeah, I don't think your feelings are invalid. I just think you did it in a really dumb way. You don't have to act on those feelings though. Yeah, you know, don't bottle them up, but like also talk to your fucking girlfriend and be like, hey, I was a little. Don't yeah. bring it up in front of everybody. Yeah. Like, yeah. I mean, that's the situation. Just because if- you and your girlfriend have two different D&D characters doesn't allow you to like fight as those characters and get away with it. I don't. Unless you talk about it beforehand, you're like, hey, listen, I think our characters are incompatible in this scenario. I think it would make <laughs> sense for us to fight. So if you want to do that, I'm yeah. comfortable with that. But, you know, it, it consent. I don't know what any of that had to do with. I, I don't know. I was trying to think of an analogy, but it didn't work. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, know. I was like, what? Um, but no, I think your feelings are valid, but like. That doesn't mean like, and I would say that we would say the same thing for women too, where it's like, oh yeah, of course, <laughs> yeah. They were in a situation where like fucking, we don't really understand their point of view. I think I would be like, your feelings aren't invalid, but stop doing what you're doing. Yeah, there's yeah. everyone has a choice of you know your partner gives you their actions on whatever it is that they're doing. Yeah. You have your boundaries. They either cross your boundaries or they don't cross your boundaries. And then you decide what to do, stay or leave. Yeah. It's pretty much it. That's pretty much the whole thing. Nobody really owes you anything and nobody owes you anything else other than respect and to respect your boundaries. Yeah, pretty much. That's pretty much it. Yeah. No, yeah, I agree 100%. Yeah. The, the response isn't to fight them. Yeah. And the response isn't to control them. It's to leave. Yeah, honestly, yeah. If you really don't like a fucking woman talking to a guy on a couch, then yeah, you then should why leave. But you're also not going to find a woman that isn't going to do that. I don't know what to tell you, man. That's pretty much it. So that's a personal problem that you need to figure out so that you can be in a happy relationship. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, I mean, that's it. Yeah, that's it. I right, solved it. So this next story comes to us from Rose. She they. So I, 18 female, have had chronic pain for as long as I can remember, but because of a doctor when I was little, my parents had always claimed it was for attention. Jesus. As a little kid, I would do ballet, flag football, and gymnastics. It was a lot for a four-year-old, but my parents have always been the kind to want to keep me involved. Here's where the problem began. I started having some pretty bad knee issues and back pain when I was around the age of six. I was still doing dance and all all that at this time. My coach had caught on to this pain and brought it up to my parents and told them that maybe I should go get it checked out, and my mom had agreed. That's good. My dad at this point wasn't very active in my life as he was was always at work. So I went to the doctors and got months of checkups, but what they found nothing, my doctor at the time had told my mom that maybe I just needed more attention. So basically I said, so basically said that I was lying and that I just wanted my parents to come and coddle me. Jesus Christ. My doctor also brought up how it was a common thing for middle school children to lie because or middle children to lie because they always are always stuck not getting what they want. That's a fucking lie. Yeah, and this I is hate a, that shit. I'll talk about it later, though. Yeah. Now, little six year old me didn't really catch on to this and just ignored my doctor. My mom, however, listened intently to what my doctor had said, and it was, it was decided that the pain I was feeling was no big deal. Jesus Christ. When my dad was home one weekend from work, he asked my mom why we went to the doctors, and she told him about the pain, and my dad just said I wanted attention just like the doctor did, so my mother agreed. And it went on like this for a very long time. My family moved to a new state for my dad's job, and I started new things. This time I played softball and soccer, and I started cheer. These were all super fun, but much like before, my coaches started telling my parents I needed to go to the doctors because they could tell there were a lot, there were times I was in a lot of pain. Wow. But my mom just told them I was just faking it for attention as children do. Oh my God. I was around eight at this time. And as I changed sports and activities, it stayed that way. Now, starting high school, I joined something called Color Guard, which is a blast. Oh yeah. However, around this time, we found out about my asthma and not only that, about not only that, but we learned that I had a severe chronic back and knee pain. So learning how to do guard and spin all these different equipment for hours at a time took a lot out of me. Yeah. 
Uh, there was one time during my freshman year at marching rehearsal, I had tripped and hit the ground hard. Usually my pain tolerance is really high and I can just deal with it, but my knee and ankle were throbbing and I had a had a bad day, so I was just bawling my eyes out. Oh, honey. My sister, 21 female, was also part of this band and at the time, so when she saw what happened, she was quick to check on me and ask if I was okay. That's good, at least. She was the only one who always made sure to check on me. When I just nodded and pushed her, uh, when I just nodded and pushed her off, one of the juniors on our team helped me walk to my sister's car. My ankle and knee were pretty swollen by now, and my sister was more than concerned. So we sped home when my parents came running outside. When they saw it was me that was injured, they just kind of shrugged and told my sister I was just faking it and needed to grow up. What the fuck, dude? It's swollen. Yeah, at least that's what my sister said they had said. So when they went back inside, my sister helped me into my room so I could pass out and sleep. And when I woke up, my ankle was burning and my, my ankle was a dark, a dark purple. I screamed for my mom who rushed in and saw it and then my dad followed, picking me up and taking me to the ER. When we got there, the nurse was quick to give me x-rayed and it turns out I had broken my ankle. Yeah. And I had had parts of my foot that were healed wrong. The lady who talked to me about my ankle had asked if, that, had, had, if I'd had any injuries like this before and I said yes, but it was several years ago. And the lady nodded, but my mom looked sick like she felt super guilty. My older sister good, took bitch. really yeah honestly yeah yeah my older sister took really good care of me for the next few months with my broken ankle with my mom helping my and my dad who apologized by buying me ice cream and taking me to see a movie unsure of what to do very dad thing to do yeah now as an adult my mother takes my injuries a bit more seriously and I'm able to make sure that, that things get checked out when I need them to we have found ways to deal with my chronic pain since then not taking it away but making it less painful my parents are more than happy to help me take care of it that's the end of the story it's just a story god man yeah that's terrible fucking doctors dude yeah doctors kind of suck and also it sucks when like one doctor just like oh yeah six-year-old fucking, it is fucking just doesn't probably give a it. shit about their fucking job god man and like knowing the parents are gonna listen to you too i mean i think the parents do have a lot to bl- a lot of blame also I will say, yeah i feel like there's a point i think we all i think everyone has like this innate ability to be like oh that person's hurting and that probably is what's happening right now is that that person's in pain and I can tell. Well, I think maybe some people have it less, you know, I think true. But I think like if it happens so often, I feel Being like quote unquote empathic is, is kind of a yeah, thing. as an empath. Um, well, I mean, it's less being like in, being like intuitive to other people's feelings. You know what I mean? Yeah, I will say, though, I think like, OK, assuming that you you're the parents. Right. And mm-hmm. you believe in this theory because it's a theory that it's just for attention. Yeah, I feel like it would make sense as me as an adult. Yeah, that at a certain point, the child would know that this is not working to get attention. So maybe there's something right. up. So yeah. I feel like but, uh, I'm sorry, listener. I think you have uh, shitty, dumb parents. <laughs> um, at least they take they they take least, care of you now. Yeah. yeah, at least they got you a, a scoop of ice cream and a waffle cone, right? Like, and we went to go see. And you went to go um, see Doctor Strange, you know. But uh, I was gonna say Lone Ranger because Lone of Lone Ranger. Because <laughs> of on cinema, yeah, yeah, I get it. Yeah. Uh, fucking, I don't know. This middle child thing though is such bullshit. I like it's something that my mom also used to do, but like she would say like, "Oh yeah, the 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 adult the." Uh, uh, first child is like the first pancake where it's like a fuck up and you know then you know they grow up and they get all the attention and you know they get into messes and they have to be the like responsible one and the middle child gets left behind so then they have to like act out for attention and then the baby is like the baby so they get all the shit and they're spoiled or whatever I hate that shit I don't think it's real. I think that's a self-fulfilling prophecy. Yeah, I think it's just if you believe it's going to happen. If you say that to your kid. Yeah, I think that's what happened. Over and over and over again. Uh, Yeah. Right. Yeah, if you keep, if you believe in it, it's going to happen. I think, I feel like that probably happened in my family. Because I feel like, yeah, you know, it's the baby. uh, Like that, it happened because people believed in it. You know, it's like, it's just, it's just bullshit and just self aggrand not self-aggrandizing, but self-fulfilling, as you said. Yeah. Uh, yeah, no, so that's just fucked up, man. It is fucked up. It's just like fucking that shit should, if you and then, and then didn't think that way. Professional a medical professional medical like, professional? Oh, yeah, uh, actually voodoo works, and... Right. <laughs> like, well, actually, if you pray to God, um, it should go It'll away. It'll go away, yeah. Like, 
no, bro, you should have gotten a, a second opinion. But I understand, like, especially if it's like a poor family and they don't have the money to go to multiple doctors. That's the only thing that I can even remotely be like, OK, I can understand that because I always feel like I think there's always like, um, especially in the fucking American medical system. Yeah. There's always like a, a back of the head like, oh, my God, if I get injured, I'm fucked. Yeah. And like, think about if you have a kid. And that kid gets oh, injured. Oh fuck, Jesus, fuck! This yeah. is, I need to make sure this kid stays alive. You exactly. know, like, and I mean, like if this if this doesn't get fixed, it's gonna be fucked up for like seventy years. And yeah, and I'm not saying that like your parents were abusive or anything, but like fucking say, inabusive parents that neglect their children medically. It's, yeah, I wouldn't. Yeah, I wouldn't yeah. go far to say that they're abusive either. No. But I will say they are fucking stupid. Well, but in abusive parents that neglect their children medically, <laughs> usually that's a factor of like they just can't pay for it. And yeah. that's the thing that makes them tell their kid it's actually no big deal. They would rather gaslight their kid into thinking that it's no big deal so they don't have to pay money to go to a doctor. Yeah. Than actually say, get their kid help. At least they felt guilty once. Yeah. Once at least they had empathy. They had a forced second opinion way too late. I was worried that like the doctor was telling your parents like, yeah, you don't have to do any shit about this. Kid's going to be fucking fine. And your parents were like, perfect. This is like oh, thank a God. perfect excuse that I don't I can use for I'm not taking gonna, care of my kid. Yeah. So God, yeah, I'm sorry. But yeah, I'm really sorry. I'm really glad though that they take it seriously. Now, yeah, finally, after yeah. all this time. Jesus fuck, man. Yeah. We didn't have to solve it, but solved it. Solved it. Damn. But that's a story. That was just a nice little story. It was fucking sad. Called, that was a sad story. But it was a fulfilling story. <laughs> At least it ended up okay. It ended up okay. I'm glad. I Hopefully it ended up okay. Yeah. Everyone fight for Medicare for all. This is the political segment. Fight for Medicare for all, everybody. Uh, Do it. Indeed. All okay, right. I'm going to get a, a hypno swirl on the TV. <laughs> That'd be fun. While I say these things. This is from Cat She, Her. Am I the asshole for cutting out my family from my boyfriend? So let's just start out with, I was 18 years old and I have a cousin that was 17 years old. I had never had a boyfriend before in my life because I was always insecure and never felt comfortable around any guy before. So when I met my now boyfriend, I couldn't have been happier. I finally felt comfortable around a guy and that was big for me. I had slept with him on our second date. My cousin kept calling me a whore over and over again. Okay. <laughs> and just not letting me live it down. Although she lost her virginity at 15 to a guy for a weekend that had a whole girlfriend. I was really was it consensual. Just really, I, yeah. Okay. All right. Then yeah. I think so. I, I hope was, so. I was really hurt by this because I was 18 and old enough to make my own decisions. Not to mention, she has always made me feel like a piece of shit because she's a size zero and I'm a size 18 to 20. And she would always call herself fat in front of me. That's fucking annoying. Yeah, fuck this person already. <laughs> fuck your cousin. So there's a lot of reasons that were that were pushing me over the edge. Uh, but that would make the story just too long. <laughs> Now with cutting out my family part, the first thing my aunt told me when I brought over my very first ever boyfriend was, you don't uh, expect this to last, do you? Okay. Hell like, yeah. <laughs> like, who says that to, to their family? <laughs> and then they just say, he'll never be good enough for you, blah, blah, blah. I've always been a people pleaser. I always did everything they asked of me. And it was always whatever my cousin wanted to do that we would actually do. I had never anything I liked or wanted to do. I've always felt out of place with that side of my family because they would always tell me how much they hated my mom. And that's just not something you tell a child throughout their life. Very true. I never commented anything badly to my cousin about her relationships. I never said once that she was a whore for losing it at 15. So am I the asshole for wanting the same respect? Sorry for being all over the place. <laughs> No, you're good. Yeah, you're not the asshole. You deserve respect, obviously. Ab there's a lot of um, fat phobia going on in your family, yeah, my guy. Yeah, so... Yeah, what the it's your your cousin is calling you a whore because you're fat and you lost your virginity. And people legitimately think, well, okay, fat, quote unquote, I'm also like a size 18, 20. So I, uh, you know, my size, I feel like I'm calling myself fat when I say that. And I don't mean fat in even a derogatory term. Like if you're a bigger person. Yeah, that's it's just uh, growing up with fat phobic people. They're going to look at you and think that you just deserve less inherently. And it's really fucked up. But they're basically telling you, you don't deserve to be happy. A boyfriend coming in and making you happy and it being a healthy relationship is like the worst thing that can happen. Because now you're getting your body fucking <laughs> validated. 
by an, yeah. a, a, somebody else who is telling you that you're sexy, you're sexy, you're attractive, you should be loved, all these things. And so now your family is going to lose control over you. And then they're going to be like, I've, I've been told that this is this can't be possible. This can't this, happen. This is impossible to happen. So that's why your cousin's calling you a whore is because she's jealous of your healthy relationship. And fucking uh, whatever your, the fuck it is that your family's saying, obviously they have some control issues. Yeah, they do. Some fucking just, that's just batshit insane to say. Yeah, to somebody it is. bringing over a partner. It's not going to last. Why are you even trying? <laughs> Why are you even trying? Why are you even trying, bro? Just kill yourself. Yeah, they're fucking. Like, what? Like, what are you talking about? <laughs> Gee, Why I even try? I just want to fucking have a it's nice relationship. It's normal to go out and have a relationship and bring it home to your family. Yeah. It's fucking normal. I don't, yeah, you guys are people. You're humans. Your family's just crazy. And yeah, no, of course. You're not fucking. Nice, man. I, I cut out my family for my boyfriend. And honestly, I think about it sometimes. I'm like, fucking, if me and Josh ever broke up, God forbid. I still wouldn't go back to my yeah, family. Yeah, it's like, I don't know. They're just going to keep being shitty. Like, yeah. So it wasn't even really for Josh. It was for me. Yeah. And, you know, you should just cut out your family for you. Yeah. If it becomes a thing where it's like, okay, this is not a healthy area to be in. They're not going to respect me. They're not going to. Yeah. You know, yeah, of course. You got to do what's best for you at that mm -hmm. point. So. That's the best decision for your relationships and for your mental, for you, for your mental health. If it have, yeah, if that's yeah. like the best, yeah, if they're gonna be fucking dicks all the time, yeah, fucking, yeah, bounce, yeah. For what? For what reason? For what? Yeah, and even if you and your your uh, your partner break up, fucking still, still cut them out. Yeah, them. don't talk to them. There's no reason to. Yeah. Unless like you need support or something, and yeah. you don't have any. But like fucking still, I mean, try anything else before you have to do that. For, yeah, true. Shit, man. I'm sorry though you have to go through that. I know yeah, it's I'm a sorry, fucking sucks. Yeah. it's a terrible situation. God. They really should not be saying that shit to you though. Yeah, it's weird. I don't know. I would never you don't even say that to like friends. Like Yeah. Let alone family. Jesus. That's fucked up, man. It really is fucked up. God. Re it's so it pisses me off to hear people telling fat women. No, where do you get that? How, how I dare don't you? Get that. I'm a size zero. Like, shut the fuck up, bitch. God society damn. told me that I deserve all the pussy and cock in the world, and society Please told me that body. they're just taking out their personal trauma on yeah. you. Yeah, system, man. It's the fucking system. Honestly, everybody should be loved and respected. Yeah, people and should be able to go on. Yeah, it's as simple as that. The infighting is so stupid. There's nothing wrong with skinny people. There's nothing wrong with fat people. Yeah, fuck skinny people. <laughs> <laughs> There's a line in the sand somewhere, and we're all focusing on the wrong people. Skinny bitches have gotten away with too much for too long, all right? Shit. Well, listen, as a medium-sized man, I think... <laughs> Mid-sized man? Mid-sized man. I, I'm the pure centrist, and I have the most reasoned mind here. I have the most <laughs> Jordan Peterson lobstered fucking mind here. Skinny women have gotten away with too much for too long. Get them out of here. I don't know, man. <laughs> I, I fucking... I'm, I'm in the whole body positive movement, even though people have tried to make that into a derogatory term. Uh, fucking in the... You know, the skinny privilege is a thing. And I think just like white privilege and, uh, you know, fucking the gendered privilege, it's like, yeah, people get scared when that seems to be the tables are turning. Mm. People get fucking terrified. Yeah. And that's uh. how you get weird situations like this where they call you a whore <laughs> or like, <laughs> yeah, like a wild shit. Like. Yeah. It's like, there's no reason. Nobody's a fucking... Nobody should use the term whore anymore. Yeah, unless, unless it's, like, in porn. Yeah, honestly, I agree with that, 100%. Y yeah. Yeah. Nobody should use that. Uh, hashtag resexualize whore. <laughs> <laughs> That's my movement. Solved it, baby. Solved it. Ha put, that, put that on a t-shirt. <laughs> Solved it, and I'm fucking sorry. This next story yep. comes to us from Carmen. She, her. San Diego. Am I the asshole for dropping my high school best friend without warning and getting her on an offenders list? Whoa. I mean, that definitely depends on if she is an offender. I, 19 females, have been friends with also 19 female since we first met in middle school and we were always very close since day one. 
We were both easygoing girls who didn't care for the drama that would always be going on with the girls in our class, so we mo mostly hung out with guys. When we went into high school, we all remained a close-knit friend group, especially me and her, but this all changed when my friends soon began to date boy the boys in our friend group. Okay. One by one, she would get with them for about three months, use them for sex, and then break up with them, only to move on to another guy the same week. I didn't really see much harm in this because a lot of our girls in our age did the same thing, and the friend group remained together, and for the most part unaffected by what she was doing. Oh, okay. Great. Wow. How did that happen? Yeah. <laughs> My last year in high school, I had a massive glow up as I always been uh, quite an ugly duckling, yes, but queen. finally grew to have confidence in myself, and I started to look better as a result. Mm -hmm. A lot of the guys in our friend group started taking a liking to me and no longer were getting played by my friend. Unfortunately, I had gotten very ill and wasn't in school that much due to this. And I told my best friend that I was getting surgery and wouldn't be back for a while. No, oh. She seemed to be very supportive of me, and we talked each day, but I soon realized a few of the boys in our group had blocked me. What? When I arrived back to school two weeks after my surgery, none of the boys would talk to me apart from one. He told me that my best friend told them all I was lying about my illness for attention. I confronted her, and she told me that he was lying and that it was him who had said it. I believed her like an idiot because I had known her for so long and never expected her to betray me. Uh, Near okay. the end of my of the year, my friend who was then 18 started to date a close childhood friend of mine. I would have been happy for her for them only to the, only for the fact that he was 14. <laughs> she bragged about how she would have sex with him and she oh, would show off his intimate no. pictures to our whole friend group. That's child porn, my it guy. It disgusted me, but I had no other friends with her since the boys stopped talking to me. When we graduated, I blocked her on all social media as soon as I got home and cut her off. Yeah. I also contacted her family and her boyfriend's family about them dating each other. <laughs> At the time, I felt shitty dropping her with no explanation, but a few months later, one of the boys came forth and said that she had in fact said I was faking my illness and it was because she was jealous of the newfound attention I had been getting. Last week, I heard she was put onto a sex offenders list I was in court for possession of child porn yeah. and raping a minor all before she had reached the age of 20. Yep. I can't help but feel guilty about confessing no. what she was doing since you I shouldn't. heard the news because I feel as though it wasn't my place. Bruh. Although what she was doing to that was just that child what was despicable. You, okay. What the f okay, fuck all right, do okay, you mean it quick, wasn't your place? All, you're not the asshole. Second of all, if you what say, do you okay. mean? You got sent child born to your phone? Well, she was showing. Well, I think it was uh, on the person's phone. Thank the God! Friends. If yeah, she had because, texted yeah. that to you, that would be on yeah, your you phone. Yeah, you would have had to have been like, "Hey, what the fuck? Don't that, send me should, child yeah, porn." If you hadn't have gone to the police immediately at that point, you would probably have gotten in trouble. Yeah, yeah you're, you're right it to go to the police. Place. It's literally CP. Like, yeah, come on. Like, it's really. Oh my God! Um, Woo, dude, she's yeah. having sex with a fourteen-year-old. Yeah, that's um, not okay. It's not okay. That is as an eighteen-year-old. Yes, literally not okay. There's no reason you should feel like that's not your place. And also, you didn't do it. She didn't do did it to wrong. herself not, yeah, by being a pedophile. Yes, literally. So yeah, you're yeah. Oh that's why you're not God. the asshole. And it, it's it's not quote unquote. Yeah, you didn't make the the decision to be a pedophile. So yeah, you're fucking yeah. Call the police. <laughs> you dodged a bullet. Yeah, he dodged a really big fucking bullet. What a crazy person. What a crazy person. Jesus. Never in my life would I ever brag at any point, even when I was 14, about fucking a 14-year-old. Yeah, I just feel like that's just weird. It's weird. You should be watching Disney Channel. You should be you should be watching The Sweet Life of Zack and Cody at this yeah. point. If you're 18, you should be planning on, like, going to college or whatever. And also, if you're gonna fuck people, fuck 18-year-olds. Yes. Yeah, literally. I don't know. I don't, yeah, I don't think, uh, I don't think you should go younger. <laughs> yeah, I don't, and even, like, you know, like, there are, like, Romeo and Juliet laws where it's, like, fucking, you know, you can go down to, like, 16 or something. I think 16 is uh, a bit much. I think if, like, you just turned 18 and, like, you're... you're partner's boyfriend. like 17 but like three months out yeah i mean fine i guess but like i feel like i don't know the specific numbers but like 14 is a lot younger 14 is excessively <sighs> younger that's like i think we've actually made that i think we've actually literally made the argument of like 14 but the difference between 14 and like 17 is a big fucking difference it is a big fucking like, difference. yeah i think that's like a I that's think like you just got into high school you just got into just high got school. into high school 
Yeah, because that's yeah, that's freshman age. Yeah, we yeah. literally had stories like that. Yeah, yeah we have. I mean, yeah, so yeah, never mind. I, yeah, people no. think like as soon as you get into high school, you're like you're like fresh meat for pussy or something. And usually it's women. This is also like I don't know. I think she could probably thought that she could get away with like women can be sexual assaulters. Yeah, they fucking can. Yeah, they can. Yeah, they yeah, they absolutely can. can. Literally can. Jesus. Anyone can be a sexual assaulter, bro. That's in- she was literally showing you. CP and raping yeah. a 14 year old you definitely had the place to go to the police yeah I think yeah I you, at least you, telling at her least family and telling his that family was a good that was decision really good that was a good decision you probably, uh, one you probably thing you saved done, that kid you saved that kid yeah you probably should have gone to the police immediately but I get like probably not wanting to because like it's a it's never a good <sighs> no one being wants young. to go to the police I feel like especially when you're anything. young yeah, you don't want to call the police yeah so it was good that you told the the parents. Yeah. It was like, holy shit, dude. Wowie zowie, man. Wowie fucking zowie. What a crazy person. Yeah, crazy. And you dodged a bullet, and you're not the asshole. She doesn't deserve it. I was going to say, like, at the beginning, too, before you said the offenders list, I was like, no, you can cut people off and not give them an explanation. I don't think anybody should <laughs> really feel bad. You still didn't give an explanation You here. still didn't even... Yeah. <laughs> I and think it's the like, explanation helped a little bit, but honestly, like you still you don't need to cut people off. And <laughs> well, I'm pretty sure she knows now why you're not talking to her. Yeah, um, and, and she the probably eyes gets of the it. Law. Yeah, I think she understands what's going on. Probably, if she doesn't, then she's really dumb. What did I do wrong? What's up B- what behind a jail cell? <laughs> yeah. What's wrong? What's wrong? You well, don't want to associate with me anymore? It's like it's like you stab a guy like a hundred times, and then you're in jail <laughs> while you're doing it. You're like, what? Well, what am I doing? Am I not a safe enough person for you? <laughs> I'm not a safe enough person? Jesus. What's the worst that could happen? And you like throw a grenade down the guy's throat. <laughs> like, <laughs> kick him off a bridge or some shit. Like the most crazy, like the craziest fucking thing you can do. Jesus. Fucking solved it though. Like literally all anybody has to say is, oh, why don't you and her hang out anymore? You'd be like, well, she's a well, pedophile. Well, she's a pedophile, yeah. Literally. Oh. Here's the court information. Here's mm. the, no, here's the, look up, look them up. Google it. Google her name. She's a pedophile. Oh, that's a that's that's, 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 a, that's a good we, that, cool. Yeah, I don't, know how to I don't think you gotta say anything else beyond that point. Nope. Jesus. Yeah, not the asshole, man. Jesus. All right. This is from Nikki. She her. Am I the asshole for wanting to leave my man after he told me to get a job? Let me start off by saying, as a kid, I knew I wanted to be a stay at home uh, wife, and then parentheses stay at home wife. Or st- S A H M, stay at home mom. I know what these things are. Um, <laughs> thoroughness is. <laughs> Thank uh, the, you, though, the name for the typing game. it out in Thank case you, I yes. didn't. It's very considerate. Yeah. Although I did have a lot of women in my life who do believe in the traditional roles, they felt what I wanted was odd for this day and age. That's interesting. Nonetheless, my mom supported my decision and even was willing to find me an arranged marriage if needed. At 16, currently 22. I met my current partner, Connor, who was 18, currently 24. I don't see. I don't think that's weird. So wait, you were, it was 18 and, and 16. She's the younger one. I don't think that's too weird. So they met in high school or. Yeah. Uh, I mean, that's not as weird as it could be. I think you're kind of it could be considered pushing it. Could it be like a young junior and an old senior. You know what I mean? That's true. I mean, yeah, I guess it, I think maybe I think you're pushing I think, it. I think a little bit pushing it. I think there's been times where I've argued that it's kind of it's still a little weird, but like if it goes on past high school, I guess it's probably like it'll because it'll be more normal because like we're two years apart. So yeah, they're now they're uh, 22 and 24. Okay, then yeah, so probably it's like, fine. okay, yeah, whatever. Um, as he was in 12th grade and I was in 10th grade, mm, a little weirder. That's a little weird. That's a little weird. Uh, I told him my hopes and dreams of being a stay-at-home wife and wanting the quote-unquote American dream. So married with two or three kids, white fence out front, two dogs, etc. He was like, score. (laughs) Well, (laughs) fucking, okay, let's go. Most guys usually ran away when I said all that, but he was cool with it. He even tried to propose to me when I was in 11th grade, but I rejected since he didn't ask my parents first. Damn, bro. Fast forward, I'm 19, just started community college. I have a job to support my family, mom, baby brother, and grandma, and I still live with them. I wasn't happy working, but anything for family. The place I worked at was toxic to the point of where they would get enjoyment of making the new workers upset. 
and leave almost crying, yet couldn't understand why nobody wanted to work there. Mm. After work on Fridays, I would go to Connor's dad's house so Connor and I could always be together, could be together, and he would always comfort me each time. I would always tell him how much I hated this and that I wanted us to have our own place so I didn't have to deal with this. During those times, he would just go quiet, but I didn't think much of it. Less than a year later, the pandemic hits and I'm out of a job. During this time, there was talk about getting our own place, but that didn't take place till the start of 2021 when we lived out of a motel. We finally have our own apartment now. That's when the issue started. He questioned when I was going to get another job. Mm. I looked at him confused and reminded him of what I wanted in life. He then told me that he thought I would have outgrown. I would have grown out that childish dream by now. And he has no intentions of getting a house or having kids. And that I needed to be realistic for once. This resulted in an argument, which I told him that if I knew he was going to be like this, I would have just stayed with my family and had my mom arrange a marriage for me. And that he lied just to trap me here. There was a lot of back and forth for a while, but things have calmed down. We still have issues here and there with him saying, you know, you could buy X if you actually had a job. Meanwhile, he still spends money on his own entertainment, which I retaliate with not cooking or cleaning for him because his parents didn't teach him basic life skills outside of microwaving food. And he doesn't know how to clean properly either. And originally I was supposed to teach him, but it's now cannon fodder. I was willing to compromise with no kids. We stay in our apartment, but I still wanted to be married at a courthouse at least. He said he won't marry me until I get a job and act like an adult. I completely shut down and gave up. I told him I am looking for a job, but I told him I didn't want to be with him anymore. Now he is saying, fine, I don't need to and wants me to stay by his side, but no marriage until he sees a change in my behavior, i.e. stop being petty if he says something about me not having a job, keep cooking and cleaning regardless. I honestly don't feel comfortable being here knowing he truly, uh, his true feelings about the situation since we want two different things in life. Am I being the a-hole for wanting to leave? Uh, I want to preference everything I'm about to say with maybe I'm just a fucking degenerate. <laughs> I feel like, um, I, I, what is it? I think, um, do I don't mean? think you're the asshole. I will say, I don't say, think so either. Actually. I don't think you're the asshole. And like, I, I, it's interesting for me cause like I've definitely, this is the first time I've ever heard of this kind of scenario i feel like and that's why i'm like wow i'm really i uh, american dream still exists for someone i know right that's kind of crazy i mean have your i mean listen uh, this is where it's like personally i'm like i what what weird i'm not used to it but i go off if you want to do whatever you want do whatever you want that's what the whole point of america is supposed to be is like you should be able to be free bro if you want to be a stay-at-home wife stay-at-home mom that's definitely something you should be able to do that you should be able to do and it's just just that's just a big incompatibility uh, fuck, yeah. fuck uh connor whatever his name for is for not being up front but then i also like understand like if somebody's feelings change but he did it he told you in a way that was really dickish yeah it was really like he's like putting himself above you and like pretending to be your parent come on just grow up a little bit like yeah well, i like, also mean like i'm not going to marry you until, until you i see a, a change in your behavior and get a behavior yeah and it's that's like, like well then we shouldn't get married like i have to physically change for you I have to change who I am just to marry you. Yeah, at that point, you shouldn't change to no. date someone, and that's like that's like the that's the biggest incompatibility. I think. Yeah, is he just wants you to be a different person, but he wants you to still cook and clean for him. Yeah, so it's like, <laughs> it's like, what the fuck do you want, guy? Like shit, you know, like Jesus. Yeah. See, I don't think you're the asshole. I, I think maybe a little bit the asshole for the retaliating, just because I mean it is kind of a childish thing to do. A little bit, but like also I'm not gonna like I'm not gonna like go like come on like fucking. It's not you're not full blown the asshole just for that. Yeah, I don't think. Yeah, in, in terms of like I wouldn't say even like everyone's shitty here. I don't feel like it's been like like I don't think you've risen to that level where it's like I think you're like about here on the asshole spectrum. Yeah, and then like he's up here right now. Yeah, so like that's why I can't be in everyone's shitty. I mean, I, I don't know. I it's, think it's very interesting to me that he was like totally down with his girl cooking and cleaning for him and not working until he got bills. <laughs> okay, Which, like, listen, yeah, okay. I want, listen, I want you to cook and clean for me, but also work 40 hours a week, get a good job and do everything. <laughs> right. That's the thing. It's like most uh, people are going to say like stay at home wife, stay at home mother is for when there are kids. So you have like a bunch of shit to do in the house. You know what I mean? 
but I understand that like, like you, uh, I want to preface this by saying you may need to work a job before That's the other you thing get too. to that point. Yeah, there's going to be a point probably where you're going to have to provide for yourself until... The reality of it is you're going to need to find somebody who is making a ridiculous income to care for you both. That's the other thing too, and, and I'm possibly like, a kid. That's why I was like, why, why do you still believe in all this stuff? Have you not seen the economy? But I'm also like, you should be allowed to try and go for it. Right. So that's the thing. That's the way I can't you let want my, to live. I can't let my cynicism prevent me from having an unbiased take about this. Like, I mean, that to me, so when you say that you want to be a stay-at-home mom, stay-at-home wife, that to me is like any other goal. Like, I want to work as a web developer. I want to yeah, work it's, it's the same in thing. a museum. It's, you know. it's the same thing. It's just you now have to set goals for yourself of, Okay, well, now I have to find somebody who's compatible with this, you know, whatever. We have to make a plan to get to that point so that we can buy a house and have a low mortgage and they can yeah. work this job and then I can stay at home and clean the thing, blah, blah, blah. But then also, like, you shouldn't be forced to cook and clean the entire time just because th- your partner knows that that's what you want to do. Yeah, there should still be like an understanding of like, hey, sometimes I can't clean, sometimes I can't, you know. And if like, I'm working a job that's taking yeah, up half gonna, of my yeah, time. If I, yeah, I'm going to need help cleaning and cooking that's like if I'm working. Yeah. The whole point. And there's also like, you're most likely going to be, as a stay-at-home mom, going to have to have time away from cooking and cleaning and your husband will probably have to cook and clean. Yeah, because like if you have kids and shit, you're probably <laughs> yeah. going to have to be one of the ones that have to like drive them to and from school or fucking... Yeah after school activities and like all that other shit so i mean yeah there's gonna be times where like even in that scenario yeah you're gonna need help on that front so like but i do want to say like it's not childish to have that want yeah i don't think so either i mean it's you know the, like it's, you shouldn't let anybody tell you that it's childish. Having, a, having a child is a very adult thing to do yes and you have to you should hopefully be an adult to uh uh you know fucking, to do that yeah and like fucking um just what am I thinking? I'm trying to think of something. Recognize that, like, it's going to be a while until you get there. Yeah, that's the thing, too. I think most people nowadays are having kids later, so if you're going to want to be a stay-at-home... Well, just with prices going up. With prices going up, and then, like, you know, like, people just don't want to have kids, because, like, you know, that's, like, and that's where my cynicism comes, is, like, well, no one wants to have kids, because, like, the world is crashing, fucking everything's no, expensive. No, people want to have kids. People don't care. Like, the fucking, especially, like, I don't know about men, but, like, women, like, uh no they (laughs) women will never ever 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 stop having the feeling of i want to have kids and not all women i'm fucking one of the women that doesn't have that feeling but like the people that do want to have kids are fucking having them okay all right (laughs) those ones they're fucking a ha- they're having two, three, five, six. I know because I fucking work with them and they won't shut the fuck up about their kids. And they really enjoy having kids. That's some people's whole personalities. Okay, all right then. So, I mean, that's still happening. Overpopulation is never going to not be a problem because people cannot stop themselves from living in a fucking first world country <laughs> and just absorbing the wealth and having children <laughs> okay that's fair enough then pooping that's out fair babies. enough pumping mm. out units i don't think i think maybe there's a decline in people wanting to have kids no yeah that's what i'm talking about because i think um there's a lot of for, from what i've seen but i don't think no one wants to have no, kids. i don't think no one wants to have kids but i think there is that's a decline i'm sorry i mean there's i, I meant there's a decline in kids so yeah people want to have kids because there's a lot of shit going on mm. and a lot of uncertainty of the future <laughs> yeah so I feel like that's where my that's I guess that's what I mean by my cynicism of like just a warning listener the trends going down for having kids it's not gonna go away but you're gonna have to I think it'll be pretty easy to find somebody that wants kids yeah true uh, the, the reason home, that yeah. people are getting upset is because people are having <laughs> you know they're the people uh wanting the climate change to happen yeah just bring it on baby come on i'm having four kids Woo. in my life but yeah I, yeah i don't think you're the asshole i don't think so either I think you, you should be able find... to do what you want you gotta find someone that's compatible yeah you're gonna find somebody who's compatible yeah someone will, someone want to fucking give you give some babies and but the problem is house. like i'm thinking like i think it's gonna be long term like and also but like if there's an arranged marriage that your mom can also yeah that might be the way to go actually yeah Depending on your compatible with the person you're being arranged to. Well, sometimes those fucking last. That's true. Yeah. Because you're forced to um 
learn to live with the person first. Mm. And then love kind of blossoms from that. I get that, then. Which is actually kind of beautiful. Hmm. But then also sometimes it's it's fucked up. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so, you know, I mean, I don't know. I'm not I'm not an expert in this. Me neither, but I've <laughs> but, just um, heard stories about it. It's interesting to me. Uh, I'm going to give a pretty, pretty solid advice. You do you, listener, and you figure out what's best for you. Definitely leave this guy if he's yeah, like... this guy. <laughs> if you're compromising already on kids... Yeah, that's, that's not like a the main thing, thing you want. On. Yeah, that's not a real good compromise. All right, just because. All right, listener, here's here's another good piece of advice. Don't watch uh, the ultimatum and take that as as, as uh, things because uh, that's not uh, that's not gonna work. The people you think should have kids are not the ones that are pregnant by the end. I'll give you that. Next story. <laughs> Don't watch the ultimatum. Really bad. It's a bad show. Fuck that show. Really fucked me. Sidebar, up. but I also solved it. My face when the breeding king gets taken too far. Ew. Fucking gross. Oh, uh, that's where the that's where the Yeah, I'm calling out all your sex jokes is gross this episode. Wow, damn. Hold on just real quick. Ew. Stop it. Sin against Christ. Oh, now you're a Christian woman? Oh wow, damn. Yeah. You gotta, get, you gotta get the nun cause. <laughs> Ew. Ew. Gross. Gross. That woman is a woman of God. How dare you sexualize her? All right. Okay. All right. Jesus. Jesus. All right. Okay. Fuck. I'm, I'm being, I'm, I'm put in my place. <laughs> <laughs> so this next story mm-hmm. comes to us from anonymous. She, they. Okay. Am I the asshole for not making room for my friends on the risers? The story mostly has to involve me and one other girl. Let's call this other girl, Jay. The story starts off one day when I'm sitting in choir and Jay and another girl walks in. Then Jay sits on the risers and realizes there's no space for the other girl. So I quickly go grab another chair so she can sit on the floor next to the risers because there's no space. Everybody seemed to be okay with this at the beginning, but then Jay started to whisper about something. But after that, (laughs) Jay left with a headache. (laughs) Why did I leave this one in? (laughs) This is so silly. This is a silly story. I know. I know. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Sometimes, sometimes you gotta let a st- silly story go through. You know. This is funny. I love this. Actually, Jay left with a headache. I still thought everything was okay, but over the next few weeks, Jay started to call me a bitch when I'd come and sit at my <laughs> usual table and being <laughs> passive aggressive and stuff like that, and saying it's my fault that the other girl had to sit on the on the on a chair. <laughs> next to the riser because I wasn't supposed to be sitting at that spot on the riser even though the teacher had assigned me to the spot a month ago because the girl I was sitting with didn't like me why did I, I, why did okay, I leave why did, I deleted again. two other stories oh and I was like I can't god. delete a third one I can't delete I'm a third crying. one oh my god we are gonna get abortion taken away from us <laughs> this is the problem I know they're kids. So I know, I get it. I know I they're kids. I get they it, guys. Know. I get it. I know oh, they're shit. kids. Sometimes you just brought me all the way back to high school. Yeah, this, this is, is high so school funny. time. Okay, let me see. Uh, this is a little oh. long. I, where did the sentence end? I don't remember. Okay, it, the last sentence I said it was leading to those girls being really rude, right? Yeah. I'm leaving all this in. A week ago, <laughs> Jay reached out for a handshake and forgiveness because I still... Because, but I, I think, but she says me. This person says because they say because. Okay. But I think it's but. But I still need to think about it, and we still need to talk about it. And I feel like, how am I supposed to forgive somebody after they're being, they've been, been being passive aggressive and rude to me for three weeks? She's very easily angered, but now she's just being really salty. All of this over a stupid ass risers. Like what the fuck? Yeah, it's really stupid. <laughs> stupid. Yeah, that's dumb. Oh my god. Listen, Fucking I'm sorry. Dumb. I'm so. I'm so- um, I, I don't think you're the asshole. I don't know. I don't fucking know. Bro. <laughs> like, what are the teens up to? Fucking, let's I don't move know. on, man. Let's it's, move on. Fuck this matter. person. Holy shit. In 20 years from now, she's going to DM you and be like, I'm mentally ill. That's what happened. <laughs> no, three years from now, she's going to email you and be like, hey, it's been a while. How you been? How's everything going? How's everything going? We're, we used to be speaking, best friends. Speaking from personal experience, oh, that's what's going to happen. Man. But uh, I don't know. I guess you're not the asshole. Don't even worry about even, it. What is... I don't even... <laughs> fucking... Some people are just mean. Some man. people are just mean. And uh, fucking... Especially girls in high school, they're just going to be mean for no reason. One time, a girl in high school uh, grabbed her titties 
her because she had smaller titties yeah and she looked at me and she was like a good friend too and she goes well at least my titties don't sag and it wasn't like we weren't talking about titties (laughs) we were talking about like something else and she just like said it in the middle of a conversation and i do think about it every day and you know what? She's an okay person. Like, she's not a bad person. She just said something mean to me. Yeah, so like... And it's just... That's just what happens. I don't know. Happens. It's just some petty drama. I really don't know why <laughs> I left that one. <laughs> That's so funny. I do, especially, I, but like... I don't know. You're not the asshole. It's just shitty things happen in high school. <laughs> yeah, it's just shitty things. Yeah. You had something shitty to you having in high school join the club. <laughs> oh my god. Holy crap. I'm sorry. I'm sorry I may find you a lot, listener. I'm sorry. I'm, but like, I'm so sorry. This but is, like, come on, like, I know this is like probably keeping you up at night. 20, and stuff. 22 year old man you're bullies gonna, a 18 year old. Yeah, you're going to grow up like in five years or whatever. You're going to have your bachelor's degree, uh, hopefully. And, and you'll probably still think about this moment. And you will still think about it. And you're going to be like, remember when I fucking did that shit and uh, turned in that story to the fucking podcast and they laughed at me i'm sorry <laughs> and i'm, I'm sorry. fucking sorry i am but sorry you're gonna look back on it you're like that was really dumb she was being a rude bitch yeah no she's being a rude bitch you're not the asshole i want to make that super clear i know we're, you are we're, not the we're having, asshole we're having a good time here but you're oh. not the asshole and like honestly like dude, i got called she's... a fucking i was called a fucking sociopath when i joked that i thought i had sociopathic yeah. tendencies and someone else was like yeah no yeah you do <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, that just happens. That wasn't even a girl. That was just a guy. That was just some guy that... That was just fucking someone. Some, some yeah, guy. It, it, any, everyone's mean in high school, dude. Everyone's mean in high school, dude. I was mean in high school, but everyone else is mean in high school. Me too. I was mean. Fuck it. Like, I mean, yeah, yeah shit happens. You've you guys probably are, said something that's mean. Y'all are a bunch of teenagers. Like, yeah. I, mm-hmm. She's probably already forgotten about it, dude. Honestly, yeah. And that sucks, but like, yeah, no, you're, mm. you're, it's not your fucking fault. But I mean, if you definitely, if this is something that really bothers you, definitely go talk to her about it. Just be, be like, like hey, hey, listen, I don't, why the fuck did you do that? Yeah, like, why are you calling me a bitch and being passive aggressive all the time? Or just maybe don't hang out with that person. Cause yeah, don't hang out with them. Call them a cunt and then leave. <laughs> I mean, yeah, that's now, now's the time when you can call someone a cunt. You know yeah. what I mean? But no, fucking just, I, I don't know. probably don't hang out with her anymore. She sounds like she sucks. Yeah, not a great, not a great person. Yeah, you want to hang around people that lift you up, man. Um, but probably if you go talk to her, she's going to be like, eh, what are you talking about? I don't know. If she's yeah. a, is a bad person. If she's a good person and she actually cares, then, then she'll apo- yeah, apologize. Yeah, apologize, yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, this person's not the asshole, though. You're not the asshole. I it just it. brought me back yeah. <laughs> to, like, being worried about how other people think of me in high school. And I'm like sitting here every day and I'm worried about being overdrawn and like going to work Dude, and like so getting abortion rights problems. taken away and fucking Madison Cawthorn with his porn tape. And what's going on with these risers, Sarah? What's going on with them? Help me. I even thought like you were a nice person for going and getting the chairs. Yeah, you're like, being a good person. And then I've you never got- been in a chorus class and had to get a chair and been like gotten chairs for before. Yo, actually, this reminds me of a story. I actually got the chair pulled out from under me oh, in that creative sucks. writing class one time. Yeah, I remember that. And the person didn't hey, expect like me. To, hardcore bullied, man. I run probably. But <laughs> what 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 part about me being uh, told sociopath is? Well, being I've bullied? seen well, I've seen the chair being pulled out before one time, and the kid fucking cried. Yeah, it hurts. Like, yeah. It hurts your fucking ass. I think his chair was like, um, it was like a stool in chemistry. Oh, God. And so he went to go sit and then fucking our shitty friend that's an asshole and I hope is in jail now, um, fucking fell and the kid was small. He was like a small, he, he was this size. Yeah. No, but he was like, like up to like my shoulders and he was a little kid and he was a sweet kid too. He had a little Jew fro. We called him fro bro. Yeah. And fucking he fell and he just started yeah, crying. it hurts to fucking fall. I, people just don't yeah. realize that. And I remember the guy being like, are you fucking crying? <laughs> yeah, that person's murdered at least two people yeah. since high school. That guy yeah. was such an asshole, dude. Yeah, He's people like, fucking suck, he man. He has a software engineering degree for sure. But uh, fucking, <laughs> it, it just, I remember seeing that. So hearing that, that happened to you, I'm, I can totally imagine. Yeah, no, it was, uh, it was fun. Yeah. Fucking. It's terrible. Fucking terrible. The amount of, the amount of bullshit I had to go through to get on this fucking platform. 
yeah. to get this. To, I the amount of blood, sweat, and tears that I had to endure. <laughs> Yeah, this to podcast be better is, than all my peers. This is yeah. This, this podcast is Josh's redemption for sure. <laughs> yeah, this podcast is me making a lot of people wrong. Yeah, specifically my high school's alumni Instagram page. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> fuck them. If okay, okay, this is not a bit. By the way, if my high school oh alumni page ever posts a picture of me, mm-hmm. a person who actually has success compared to every other person that Do is they on have that the rights. They don't have the fucking rights. No, we're gonna yeah. sue them. Yeah, they. Yeah, I'll fucking. I'll come for your asses. Yeah. The fuck. All right. Just because I won and everyone else at schools are fucking losers. <laughs> All right, we need to take uh, a sidebar because I need to get this off my chest. Fucking one person from my high school is also like a fucking TikTok like musician now, like pop star. Oh, did you show me her music? Before? Yeah, I did. Yeah. yeah, it was okay. It was fine, but like you guys gotta really stop paying producers to jumpstart your career Mm -hmm. you guys are getting scammed you guys are getting fucking scammed anyone can do that on tiktok and usually those are the ones that blow up is when you self-start it yeah you gotta you gotta be like a ty (laughs) virtus or whatever his name is where you make a make a cool fucking do it yourself yeah and then you're like and then you get a producer but like when it jumps when you start out with a producer immediately all of tiktok is going to call you an industry plant yeah literally Yeah, yeah like that's what happened to the fucking um what were their names? Wet leg? Um, not wet leg. It did happen to wet leg. It happened to wet leg? Yeah. That sucks. Wet leg's being called an in- industry plant. They're just what nice was, like, people. The, there was like the big one. It was like a oh. punk. Um, what the fuck were they called? Wet badge. Uh, what were they called? <laughs> <laughs> like something weird. Was was wet tram leg. stamp. Tram stamp. Yeah. It would be real. Was was a uh, wet badge <laughs> the first project before wet leg? Is that what you're saying? Oh, we can't do that. It's gotta be wet leg. No, I, like, I was trying to think of like a punk. I was like, no, yeah, no. Something I'm sorry, I should have said fake. or like ass or something. Yeah, but tramp stamp is what tramp it was. Stamp. Yeah, so like, yeah, everyone yeah. jumped on that, and that's what's gonna happen to you guys if you decide to mm-hmm. pay your way. Unless you get like a Fiverr <laughs> like producer, yeah, yeah. some random <laughs> asshole yeah. on the internet. Pay Don't, thirty dollars if your thing's fully mastered on your first uh, single. You're, um, you're, you're gonna get stupid. you're gonna get fucking wrecked. It, you have to have it mastered in your bedroom. You have in to do the Billie Eilish thing. Yeah. Yeah. Well, no, Billie Eilish is an industry player. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, you're <laughs> like, right. She literally is. But she got away with it, is what I'm saying. Yeah, she was good enough to get away with it. For yeah, sure. you had to be good enough to get away with being an yeah. industry plant. So, yeah, sorry. I just want to get that off my shit. <laughs> Since we were on the topic, now that we're talking about high school, yeah. it just it came to mind. I wanted to say it out loud. I listened to her music. Wanted... She was fine. Yeah, that's the thing. It'll be fine. But she didn't blow me away. Yeah. You're but just gonna... I mean, like, who does anymore? Wet leg, that's it. Wet leg, Jack White. That's Phoebe it. Bridgers. Phoebe Bridgers. The yeah. people we're seeing this year. But, but yeah, <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't go to her concert, but I mean, that's just not music for me, I guess. Yeah, that's true, yeah. Which, I, I mean, like, like, I don't know, someone who likes, okay, this is the pop corner. Yeah. As someone who likes, like, Carly Rae Jepsen, I guess. I feel like there's just, like, a fucking... But she's special, um, too. I would go see Carly Rae Jepsen. Yeah, I would go see, yeah. Like, that's the thing, is where it's, I'm like... You need like a fucking oomph or something, you know. You need like you need like a fucking you, you need a saxophone. It just sounds fucking like beginning. Dua Lipa to me. Who, uh, Carly? No, you're the person. Oh yeah, okay. I guess that's the thing. Is like she just sounds like a Dua Lipa. You have to have a knockoff, oomph, but like yeah, you're a knockoff at that point if yeah. you follow exactly the footsteps of someone else. I mean, you know, you'll make money doing it. Yeah, you'll make you know you'll make your a couple dollars off of Spotify, but then most of that money's gonna go to the person that mixed it and mastered it and has the rights to it. You can't judge a goldfish um, by how it climbs a tree, though. You know what I mean? That's true. If it's your destiny to go be a Dua Lipa knockoff, do it. Make your money. Nobody cares. Like fuck it. Who cares? I don't. I didn't find anything egregiously wrong with her music to the point where I'm like, why did a producer pick her up? So that's, I guess, my point. Is oh, like, that's fair then. She's going to make, like, some money and maybe do some touring and then, like, actually learn, like, the hardships of being a musician. Like, it's still hard to do that. Yeah, true. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I just feel like I got to be fair because I'm like, I shit on music so often. <laughs> <laughs> I get it. If and, I just uh, shit on somebody for being an <laughs> asshole from your your school now see and that's 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 good that you're doing that i get to have like personal vendettas now if she like spat in your face or something while you were in high school i would be like her music sucks ass <laughs> her music sounds like nah, garbage she's, she's probably farting a fine person. out of poop yeah she's probably one of the few fine people know. that i had like no real issues with too so like yeah, yeah. it's like fuck it 
<laughs> until you have like, like a, a real, memory or something yeah, where it's like, like she actually held me down and slapped me 20 times <laughs> then i'm gonna be like me. actually her music sucks ass <laughs> no yeah her music's fine i don't know just yeah. i don't know someone as, as uh <laughs> it's interesting to see sometimes it's interesting to see sometimes and it's like i don't know as someone who has been very fortunate enough to make it in yeah. my own on on here it's like we've made money so we've made it yeah we've made it yeah i mean i think we made it since like we passed 100 people on tiktok (laughs) yeah that's our personal success story yeah you know i feel like someone who's made i'm like you know i mean just do it better (laughs) yeah it's real easy to sit on top of my throne and be like come on come on jack maybe she'll be a fucking yeah, Superstar. I'm gonna bite all these words yeah, later. This I is gonna know. this is gonna be shit that I'm gonna. That's you can not gonna play back. rob you of your success. You know what I mean? No, yeah, of course not. I hope I hope she's somewhat successful. I just like, come on, just yeah. As someone as someone who was fucking bullied for being right, yeah, getting to this point, you gotta and you were like like you gotta yeah. If you, it, got, it if, got this, if you got this privilege, you gotta fucking do something good with it. I had very little support from high school. You gotta come on. <laughs> Sounds like you gotta unpack that trauma, baby. Yeah, never. I don't know, like fucking one of my, um, one of my old, uh, classmates, uh, became a model. Mm. And she was like this girl that I knew that I would teach like chemistry and math. (laughs) And so fucking I like knew her and she was very gorgeous. And I remember when she was like, oh, I'm going to go do this modeling thing because in Florida, like you literally i got it too but i think it's just like they just send like pieces of mail to every girl in the tri-state area and <laughs> just like hey do hey you do you want to join this beauty pageant that's literally it like i got a thing in the fucking mail that was like we were told that you might be interested in a beauty pageant <laughs> and i was like what the fuck and i showed my mom and she was like oh somebody thinks you're pretty and i'm like this is stupid this is weird why are they sending me why are they going through the post office to tell yeah. me this i'm like i'm fat <laughs> <laughs> they don't think i'm gonna succeed in this world you, you have to really kill it in the talent competition <laughs> i'm like fuck man i don't know uh but yeah no she did that shit and she like became a model and was like partying in orlando and like the rooftop parties and like oh, new shit. famous people and nice. shit. It was awesome. That's pretty cool, honestly. Yeah, good for them. Yeah. Hmm. This is from Kay, she, her. Am I the asshole for not going to my niece's wedding and cutting her from my life? <sighs> Probably not. Knowing most how these stories most go. Most of the time <laughs> not. <laughs> yeah, knowing how these stories go, yeah. <laughs> to start, I was selected as a bridesmaid in my niece's wedding. That's fun because it makes it sound like it was a raffle. And you won it in a raffle or something. So we played a game of bingo and... <laughs> I, don't I, know. Got, I got one of them. I like that verb choice. Uh, it was a surprise as we weren't really close due to a political and just human decency discrepancies. <laughs> I like the way you use words. I, yeah, a l- writer over here. <laughs> a little background. My niece, Terry, and her fiance have made many racist, homophobic, transphobic comments in the past. I spoke to them about it and they said they didn't realize and start stopped doing it around me. They also lost some friends due to this as well. I work night shift as an ICU travel nurse and have 13 week contracts at a time. So I want to tell you this right now. You literally can't do anything wrong (laughs) to be an asshole. Literally. Yeah. You could murder a guy and I'd be like, well, she's a nurse. Yeah. She's a nurse. She's a fucking nurse. Guys, COVID's been going on. (laughs) Yeah. I I would just be like, honestly, yeah, I totally get it. Yeah. Fucking he had it coming, you know, that, that, so I'm biased. Um, I let her know what dates I am available for dress shopping as she asked all of the eight bridesmaids our availability she picked a date and everyone agreed her sister and i were the only people helping her with the entire wedding no one else two weeks before the date her one friend couldn't make it so she canceled the whole thing and chose a date that i had worked the day before and the day of i told her i could not go unless it was right after i got out of work as i needed to sleep she made me an early appointment and we were good two days prior to the appointment she texted me to say that the appointment was canceled because they overbooked and i had to go at noon i explained that i absolutely i absolutely could not because it's not safe for me to not sleep and go to work yeah you're literally a nurse yeah (laughs) she accused me of trying to ruin her day um not the asshole (laughs) 
<laughs> well, I got like seven paragraphs left, so... <laughs> Uh, <laughs> okay. I held firm and stated I could not go. A family member that was with her then called me and said, Hey, FYI, she gave her your appointment to her friend. So I confronted her and said, I'd rather not be in the wedding because that was disrespectful to lie yeah. and screw me over that way. I told her I'd rather just be a guest because she had been rude to me many times when I was one of two people helping her out of the eight. Yeah, you're literally helping out too, like during I, all this. Yeah, you got leverage. I found this really disrespectful as she knew I then couldn't make it later and Terry became accusatory and nasty with me. So she basically told me sorry that she didn't even think of it that way and I agreed to be in the wedding again. Dumb, I know. I mean, you're, you're being... Like you're being you're, manipulated. Yeah, you're being manipulated. So, it's not dumb. The bridesmaids have a group chat about the bachelorette party and the bridal shower. Terry wants to go to Nashville for the bachelorette party during spring break. I started looking things up and found out we had to book now because it's a popular spring break destination. I brought that up in the group chat in November as the party was to be in March as the wedding is in May. Jeez. Fuck. <laughs> yeah. That's, this is um, late. <laughs> sorry. Oops. A few people were concerned about costs for these two parties and they wanted high-end everything. The people con concerned contacted me directly as they were on a budget. After mentioning that we need to get this stuff figured out and get an amount set for everyone, I was attacked by one of the maid of honors for being a bitch because Whoa. I wanted to know when we were booking things and how much it would cost. Bro, if you were like, hey, how much would this cost and when are we booking? And somebody else was like, God, stop being such a bitch. <laughs> that's like so funny. Yeah, that's fucking wild, actually. I really can't. <laughs> Yo, I really, guys, you're trying to be responsible and then someone's like, fuck that shit. Fuck being responsible. Fuck. <laughs> this next part kills me just as somebody who works with Airbnb booking. Um, the maid of honor then called Terry to complain and say I was nasty and I received a nasty text from Terry. I then screenshot the convo and sent it to her and I asked a, just asked a question that three other bridemaid, bridesmaids wanted to know. She told me that they were sensitive to everything and don't like to be pushed. What the fuck? What's going on? Yeah. This sounds like a headache and a half. Terry then appointed one person to book the stay in Nashville the girl picked a place with three beds that cost $3,000 a night. What I can't even... What the fuck? That's crazy to that's me. That's an insane... You're, I don't know the prices of Nashville off the top of my head, but that's... That sounds insane. Beds. Yeah. Bro, we got a downtown <laughs> fucking thing in Atlanta for, for like... For $200. Yeah, you're going... You're That's a mansion, probably. <laughs> that's like a big-ass house. But it's not that big. Cause it's only three beds. It's probably it's probably big, but like has like three bedrooms and five baths or some shit. You know what I mean? Yeah, but that's fucking stupid. That's really dumb for this wedding. Yeah, it's really dumb. It's I'm not saying it's smart. I'm saying that's probably it's, it's still a bad decision. It like, probably is. I don't know. I don't even know. But it looks fancy. There's columns in the front. It, does it even? It's I don't probably know. just an overpriced piece of shit. Um, it was also about 20 minutes from downtown Nashville and we all agreed to stay closer to be able to walk home after partying as Ubers are, Ubers are limited during spring break. I had brought, it's during spring break, that's why. I had brought up that 13 people were going, 13, I thought it was eight, that 13 people were going and posted a few <laughs> listing with 15 beds that cost about 1600 a night. That makes more sense. Yeah, that makes more sense. Yeah. They app the appointed person stated that the one she chose has couches we can sleep on and we can get blow up beds. And I'm also here to tell everybody, no, you can't. Yeah, aren't that's actually not a real thing you can do. Yeah, most of the time it's you no. Know, we have a maximum occupancy for a fucking reason. You can't just bring yeah, can't however just bring many people a bunch you of want. Beds. Yeah, I feel like it's really stupid. Also, you're gonna force like. At least seven people to sleep on the ground. To sleep on the fucking ground to p and pay more money or the bench. Yeah, no, that's fucking it's not bench. Uh, uh, couch. couch. Yeah, that's stupid. Now, I would not want to go to this wedding. I would not want to do this anymore. Yeah, she said it had a nice accent wall to take pictures, so she wasn't budging, and that was her choice. Terry's sister called me to say she wasn't going to the bachelorette party because she wasn't spending all that money to sleep on a couch or a floor. 
She also doesn't get along with Terry when Terry drinks because Terry gets nasty with her. Sounds like Terry gets nasty a lot. Yeah, it sounds like Terry's kind of a bitch. (laughs) (laughs) We came up with a compromise that if Terry's sister and I got a hotel, that we can meet them down there and evade problems between the sisters. I called Terry to see what she felt about this, and she was yelling at me that if I can't respect how things are, then I shouldn't go. fucking trying to compromise. (laughs) What the you're fuck? You're trying to make things work and you're being told to go fuck yourself, yeah, basically. Yeah, super weird. Yeah, I wouldn't want to be friends or be a part of this person's life either. No, Jesus. she sucks. Yeah. That maybe I shouldn't be in the wedding. She accused me of manipulating her sister when I <laughs> go was... Go fuck yourself. <laughs> I was just trying to get her sister to go to the party. Background on the drinking. At Terry's engagement party, Terry was trying to fight her pregnant sister because she was drunk. She literally went up to her sister's car and was punching her windows when there were kids and her pregnant sister in the car and all because it was 930 at night and she had to get her kids home. Yeah, like Terry's an alcoholic. Yeah, it sounds like Terry um, needs to needs help. Yeah, it sounds and like you don't need to be the one to give her help. Don't worry. <laughs> but uh, uh, neither does her fucking sister. I would be like, bro, you need to get out of here. Jesus. Yeah, not a safe person. <laughs> I was over the drama at this point and just said I'm done. It was much more drama than I needed, so I told her I'll be there as a guest and not to ask me to be in the wedding again. She said she understood, but then proceeded to call my sister and my mom to talk crap that I was starting problems. (laughs) I don't have anything to say. That's Uh, funny as fuck. I don't... I'm... Obviously not that. Yeah. Uh, I had to send everyone screenshots, and then they all sided with me. I would be pissed at them. Oh, man. For not siding with you first. Yeah, honestly, I mean, I get like some people are like, "Come on, show me the if proof." Terry's but, like, like this, though. Yeah, you guys should believe. I would never. I wouldn't. I wouldn't need screenshots would never either. Trust what comes out of Terry's mouth. Yeah, I'm not one to be in drama, and that's all the wedding planning was. So as a guest, I was okay because I wasn't involved in the drama. Fast forward to February, Terry posted a controversial post on Facebook. Ooh. I made a comment stating that if that is the case, then I will be declining her wedding invite, but to have a great time and I wish her well. She got super offended and then said it was a joke. I don't take racism or hate speech as a joke. <laughs> just saying the, just even saying know. the n-word 15 times. Like, I mean, like, it's just the, a prank, bro. In the Facebook font thing. Jesus. Uh, it's uh, Harry's in a uh, not so good mood, and it's the meme generator. <laughs> yeah, right. Jesus Christ. She then called her sister and told her to uninvite my family to the wedding. I got the call and was okay with it, as my family no, wanter- no longer wanted to have anything to do with her at this point due to these quote unquote joke comments she made. Just a prank, bro. I wrote to her by text and said, Thank you for being an adult and calling me yourself. That honestly, this was for the best because I was going to have to decline the invite due to certain comments she had made. And then I wished her well and told her to enjoy her special day. Terry then proceeded to call her mom and sister and told them to choose me or her. They told her she was ridiculous, then called me. <laughs> Your own mom and Your own mom sister? Your like, calm, calm, calm down a little bit. Oh. Jesus. That's a little much, don't you think? We saw what you put on Facebook. Jesus. I was over the unnecessary drama, so I told her I no longer wanted to be a part of her life and that I was blocking her on everything because I don't need the problems. Terry then proceeded to go to her mom's house to call me from my sister's phone and apologize and beg me to go to the wedding. Told her that I was sorry, but I can't be a part of this anymore and I and I had to go. Am I the asshole? Yeah, no. No, 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 no you're not. No, Do we even have to explain? Not. Like, I no. Don't, I don't think we have to. She's I think, a monster. Um, she's a monster. I think probably what happened was she went to her mom and her you sister. Could've, you could have stopped. And her mom and her sister were like, you're a crazy bitch. You could have stopped the story <laughs> at um, attacking a pregnant lady. And I think yeah. we all would have gotten the gist of, yeah, no, this person's not good and you're not the asshole. I just like hearing about stuff like this, though. Yeah, honestly, this I, yeah, sometimes it's, it's just so it's a fun story. And this is why I'm never getting married, because um, I don't think any of that go, shit will happen in our family, though, honestly. I'm going to go uh, Groomzilla on everyone. <laughs> Groomzilla. Yeah, I'm going to be like, listen, I need... That would be really cute, I think. Destination wedding. <laughs> We're going to Hawaii. We're going to fucking Hawaii. Bro, Bro I- you, you're fucking the person that... You, three beds for three grand. One of my friends was like saying about how he wanted to go to Bora Bora recently. Yeah. And I was like, oh, yeah? And he was, like, weirded out. 
that I never thought about going to Bora Bora. <laughs> Why? Why? It's just, who cares? It's just a place. It's just a- yeah, I was just like, uh, it's just a country I've never thought of going to. And he was just like, you never thought about it? I was like, uh, Sometimes people no. don't think about the specific things that you <laughs> thought about. Like, <laughs> I guess it was like it was weird. I don't know. I don't assume everyone to know as much as I know about Rick and Morty or fucking Community and be like, you don't, you don't know this one scene in Community in the like, season four bullshit. Like, like that, I get it because I do that. But like, fucking the fact that it was like, it's not a lifelong goal of yours to go to Bora Bora, and I was like, no, no, why, why would it be? I was like, I mean, I guess I can think of like a different island that I would want to go like Trinidad or something. Yeah. I don't... But like, that's because it has personal meaning to me and not because it's like, I don't know. Is Bora Bora like a big place to go? I spell it. We, I need to get to the bottom of that. <laughs> like, what's the Bora Bora of this? I need to know. I actually don't know how to spell it. I'm dumb. I don't know. I'm a dumb fucking cracker, but like me too. Dumb American. I don't fucking know. It's literally B O R A. Wow, a small, a, a small South Pacific island northwest of Tahiti mm. in the French Poly- uh, Polynesia, surrounded by sand fringe modus isla- uh, islets and a turquoise lagoon protected by a coral reef. It's known for scuba diving, and it's also a popular luxury resort destination where some guest bungalows are perched over. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's the end of it. Sounds good. It's just a fucking. Do you want to go to Sandals? Why don't you want to go to Sandals Resort? I, I, that's what it sounds like to me. Yeah, it's like why? It's just such you don't a specific get, place. <laughs> you don't want to go to Disneyland between the months of uh, December <laughs> and January to see the the Christmas lights. That's not a lifelong goal of yours. I think it's just a weirdly specific like. <laughs> like I guess I could see a lot of people wanting that, but, but also like also not everyone's gonna not want everyone. that. Yeah, yeah, I feel like that's a normal thing. I don't know. That just reminded me of that thing. Anyway, you're not the asshole. Yeah, you're not the asshole. I, I'm sorry we had to go on a tangent. <laughs> pretty obviously. I don't obviously, know what else to say other yeah. than you're not the asshole. That bitch is crazy. That bitch, bitches be crazy on this on this, on this, this one. Bitches be shopping. We got, <laughs> we got Bridezillas and Pedophiles this episode. That's the title. Found it. Fucking awesome. That's going to get us demonetized. <laughs> solved it. Yeah, we did solve it. But yeah, you're not the asshole. You're not Sim- the asshole. Simple as that. So... Oh, it's actually kind of a similar story. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. It's about weddings? Yeah, it is. So, this last story comes to us from Gabby. She, her. Hi, Gabby. I don't want my sister at my wedding. This year, my fiance, 30 male, and I, 24 female, are getting married, and this has made me realize something. I don't want my sister there. Oh. A few years ago, after our parents divorced, my sister jumped headfirst into her religion. Both she and I are Christians, but the way she practices her faith borders much more on cult-like behavior than what is usually practiced in the Christian faith. Oh. She has cut off communication with both of our parents after they got divorced and remarried because in her eyes, in her eyes, it's, quote, not biblical. Fucking for real? However, she what? still talks to both of her husband's parents despite the fact that they are also divorced and have remarried. She also made it clear that none of us were going to have a relationship with them or their children, my niece and nephews, unless we change our way of living to what they see as, quote, the correct way. She also no longer speaks to our father because he and his wife left the faith a few years ago. Uh, she, uh, she now only cont- contacts me and our younger brother on rare occasions, and it is usually only about her kids and her life. Mm. She never asks about us or how we are doing. She isn't even aware that I have a boyfriend and have been living with them for two years and are now engaged. I'm very tired of her selfish and holier-than-thou behavior, and I am disgusted that she would use her children as pawns against us and our parents. At this point, I don't even know if I would consider her a family member anymore. Hmm. My fiancé and my family all say I should invite her to be polite, saying that if I don't, I'll regret it later on, but I don't want her or her family there. What should I do? Uh, don't invite them. Yeah, you don't want her there, you don't want her there. I mean, yeah, if you're already, like, talking about, like, how different you, like, practice your own religion, and if they're going, like, cult fucking, like... Yeah, that's fucking crazy, uh, dude. What's the word, like, even evangelical, I guess? Yeah, Yeah, like, fucking, at that point, it's pretty incompatible. Yeah. And, like, there's not much you can do, I think, to, like, pull them out, because, like, I don't even think you'd be able to, honestly. And also, if you haven't talked in a while, it's like... Or if she only talks to you through text, and you haven't seen her... And also only talks about... 
her kids and doesn't even try to figure out anything about like you. I feel mm, like yeah, yeah. At that point, there's not much you can do. Don't invite him to the wedding and fucking not. Yeah, honestly, I kind of get the not like viewing her as family. My key. I don't know. The only thing I can relate this to is my brother didn't invite me to his wedding, but that's because we literally don't talk. <laughs> True. Yeah. And I mean, like, I was like freaked out when I found out, but now I'm like, yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> yeah, that's the thing too. Like, I mean, I don't know. I feel like um. Yeah. I don't know. I think I, she'll get yeah. it probably. She'll understand. It, yeah. <laughs> if she's the one that put the line in the sand, then yeah. Yeah. At that point, and then also like fuck her double standards of like talking to it's the weird. husband's I, parents, even though they're divorced and remarried. Like that's really. I think she's just got some trauma that she's got to unpack. She's using her religious yeah. shit as a way to like do whatever she wants. It's it's kind of like and judge people. Yeah, rules for thee, but not for me. You know, I guess like well, not for even other these. <laughs> like yeah, her husband's parents. So I don't know. I I don't know. She just got some fucking issues, man. Yeah, honestly, I don't even know. I don't know how to fucking go with that. But yeah, yeah. I don't. I don't blame you for not inviting. Her. From your point of view, yeah, she's the asshole. I don't know what the fuck is going on if her husband has, like, indoctrinated her into it or... Yeah, and that's why I we guess, We don't like, have enough information for it. Yeah, I need more information and, like, I don't know, like, if, if that's the case of, like, being indoctrinated, leave a line open, I guess. But, yeah, like, that's usually our thing. But, like, I don't know, fucking, if it's if it's her, like, no, actually, I went on this Facebook group called uh, Q Theory and, like, it's, you know... Yeah. At that point, it's like, well, I don't know what the fuck you can do. Like, okay, Jan, and then move on, I guess. Yeah, but yeah, don't, yeah, definitely don't have her at the wedding. Yeah. If that, it's your wedding. Yeah. You can decide who's there, what makes you comfortable. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. She um, holds a grudge over you for that. It's something she gonna, has to reflect on. Yeah, and, and she'll have to understand why eventually. Yeah. If you're lucky, but like. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, I don't think you're the asshole if you don't bring them. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, it It really just would mean, like, uh, you might just hear some, like, you might just have to deal with the bullshit of, like, why didn't you invite your sister to the, but also it's, like, because she's a crazy, she's a crazy person. fundamentalist, almost, yeah. yeah, but also not really a fundamentalist, yeah, just sometimes a fundamentalist when, like, she feels like it, which is every fundamentalist, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> sounds about right, yeah. so, yeah, uh, I, yeah, don't invite her to the wedding. What you should do is you should invite her, but then have it in, like, um, a church that isn't Catholic or Christian or whatever. Send her somewhere else. Yeah. Yeah. Have it, um, have a, no priest at the wedding, fucking. Yeah. Ooh, you know what you gotta do? You gotta really push it. You gotta have your wedding on the same day as someone else's, but, like, like during a gay marriage. <laughs> just make her explode yeah yeah that's funny uh, wait we, we're, we're gonna do our wedding first but they're doing a gay wedding in there right now <laughs> yeah we gotta let them have their their do it they'll go in the other room yeah they'll go in the other room and then eventually this we'll church have... lets the gays get married <laughs> and, oh then, my God. and then explodes into a million pieces and then you don't yeah. have to deal with her anymore can i tell you the reason that i think my um my brother's uh, my brother didn't invite me to his wedding yes um while my mother was living down here but we weren't talking there was a period of time where my brothers would contact me to be like we're gonna send you christmas presents literally never sent me christmas presents before and i know i've said that before because i think it's funny yeah but i just remembered i sent them an address that was like a fake p.o box mm -hmm. in a different area and lied oh. and said that my apartment complex was using this p.o box thing because I thought they were going to give that address to my mom. And it was on like the other side of town. <laughs> so I'm like, I just think it would be really funny. If they, they, I know it's maybe probably not, probably not what happened, but like, but it would be, funny if it like, would be I, so funny thinking my mom is driving around trying to find where I live because she has no idea where the fuck I live anymore. It's Friday. It's been a whole week. Why hasn't she come to the goddamn post office to get her goddamn mail? Wasting my mom's time. Just fucking. <laughs> meanwhile, they're sending stuff, and then the people at the post office are like, what the "There's fuck not a Sarah here in here." Rips it up. Yeah, in I don't a think I ever pieces. even paid for it. Treads. I'm sure it went back to them. Yeah, it had to. Uh, so they like, were probably like, "Why did she give me a fake address?" This, this is crazy bitch. Return to sender. Fucking. But it's a. I don't know. I think like, the more I think about my brother not inviting me to his wedding, I'm like. Bro, I fucking get it. I don't know. We yeah. just didn't grow up together, really. Yeah. It yeah. just what I don't I don't really feel that much about it. Like, I don't know. My only feelings are like 
a little bit of resentment that he he chose my mother's side over me. But oh, yeah, like, that's bullshit. Like, I mean, yeah. But then I'm also like, I mean, yeah. I don't know. I just feel like he just didn't care. I just kind of feel like they don't really care. Yeah, honestly, that's, that's kinda... just how it feels. It's not like really any sort of like big whoop. So not being invited to his wedding is not really that big a deal. Like I, I don't think you. about it every day. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, true. I think about it every day. Every fucking day, Sarah yeah. just wakes up in the morning like in a cold sweat. Yeah. Brother's wedding. Oh, it's just a dream. Okay. <laughs> but it's I have also to deal like with that every day. <laughs> I've also had the realization that they probably don't even think about me. Yeah, because they're fucking <laughs> like I've been <laughs> thinking. Shitty brother. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> My fucking mom is out. I've been thinking that my mom is like trying to find me and trying to blah, 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 trying to get back. And I'm like, actually, no, I think she just doesn't give a shit anymore. It's been so long. And same for my brothers. It's yeah. just, I, don't, I just think they don't think about it. Damn. Which is kind of a good thing because it's yeah, like, yeah, all right. you're free. Yeah. Yeah, I'm fucking free. Yeah. And so probably the same thing's going to happen with your sister where just don't invite her. Separate it and then, Separate yeah. and, you know eventually she's not gonna give a shit <laughs> yeah yeah man yeah but yeah not the asshole not the asshole and solved it solved it that's the show we did it we solved all our, we solved all of them every single one we did bitch but sarah yeah what's up what do you want to plug follow me on twitter fam at s-q-u-i-n-t-o-n-271 that's s-q-u-i-n-t-o-n-271 what about you joshua uh i'm joshua chinland on twitter a guy named jc on twitch mm-hmm APWSTR on TikTok, YouTube, uh, Patreon, Buy Me a Coffee, a podcast will save this on Instagram, and gaming content comes out the week this podcast goes out, so make sure to subscribe to YouTube. Hell yeah. Baby. baby. And that's the show. That's the fucking show, baby. That's fucking it. Uh, see you on the next one where uh, we party it up. We do party it up there. <laughs> All right. Peace out, guys. Bye. All right, before we do the wordle, what's the outro? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> is that it? That's all you have to say after this episode is wee wee wee. Yeah. You're gonna do a bunch of um, what is it? Fucking uh, Weird Al Yankovic voices, just fucking. That, that's not Weird Al Yankovic. He does song parodies. Yeah. What are you talking about? Isn't there a comedian that does like just sound effects for like a like a thing, like as as a bit? Oh yeah, I know who you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, Anthony Jeselnik. Ass. No, the actual guy you're talking about <laughs> sucks ass. Yeah, I know. Yeah. <laughs> he try, I tried watching his stand up where he starts out where he like goes to a club. Oh yeah, and I had to stop it because he just stacks the voices on himself. Oh yeah, but not in a cool like Reggie Watts way. No, like in like a, he's doing it all. He's beatboxing by himself without a looper or anything. Oh okay. And fucking it was, but he kept doing the same like annoying voices, like oons 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 oons. I'll do. I'll do. I'll do anything. Oh my god! Like yeah, yeah. Fuck. Yeah, like yeah, that, that shit. Sucks, and I'm just like, shit. wow, you, you fucking suck. Like you spent all this time, yeah, into doing this talent, and like the content sucks. Yeah, could have done. You could have done the Mark Rebier thing, but like, no. You are talented, but you just suck. You just suck. <laughs> Fuck. Damn. What if I cut? everything beforehand but you it just looked like you were telling me i'm just talented you are talented but, <laughs> but you suck. suck thanks sir i really appreciate it you really want me to man yell the power at you. of editing is crazy you can make someone say so. say something they don't mean isn't that cool i'm joking no i'm i know me too i think that's the outro though I think me too yeah <laughs>